playing um, Northrop today, and next week we play Morgan State. And they game oh, plan for Jiren Russell. So he used to be in that league at Alcorn State. So just another Both reminder of MEAC. First ever matchup between these two teams. Uh, as you might guess, Norfolk State is from Norfolk, Virginia. An enrollment of right around uh, 5,500, about 5,000 undergrads. So a bit larger uh, than St. Francis. We talked about both quarterbacks Jiren Russell and Joan Carter, and we will continue to talk uh, about them. But on the defensive side for uh, these two teams, we'll start with uh, the visitors. Uh, they have an outstanding player, actually a former teammate of several St. Francis players at Lackawanna College over in Scranton, Tyler Scott. He's a redshirt sophomore linebacker out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, his older brother, actually, David, plays for the Tennessee Titans. David played at West Virginia. But the flash offense is going to uh, be taking on a talented linebacker. Team high, 21 tackles for Tyler Long, eight of those solo. And uh, he had uh, just a really solid game against Wake Forest, and he's a guy that flies to the football. Uh, yeah, Pat, this team has a lot of speed, and they were very aggressive. So let's see how they play this out today. And on the flash side, Martin Ferre has really done well. There's the kickoff. SFU will get it to start. This game, glad you could join us on Northeast Conference Front Row. Farbaugh and Roberts with your officials for today's game. Bob Cannon, Avis Smith, Richard Lutz, Brad Cape and Robert Hamilton, and Keith Fell are the officiating crew. And, of course, our team here on NEC Front Row. Jay and I are producers Jake Slobodnik, Alex Croco, and Elizabeth Basin are our camera operators. First snap of the game for the flash. From the 23 is Jiren Russell, the Alcorn State Transfer Surveys. Resets. And they go to the Shields on the first play from scrimmage. Marcus, who is from Lackawanna College, he pounds his way for a couple of yards, tests the middle of that Norfolk State defense. All right, Jay. Uh, your predictions, well, not your predictions, but your keys for the Flash to come away a winner here against the Spartans this afternoon. First of all, they got to handle the speed of the, um, the skilled players on uh, Norfolk side. They got to handle that quarterback, the running back, and the wide receiver. They got to keep that speed in check. Marcus gets it again. He gets to the outside across the 35 first down yardage. He is pulled down from behind by Christian Ruffin, a freshman out of Raleigh, North Carolina. But he carried Ruffin for about four or five yards, does move the sticks, and the first first down of the game, Flash get it. It'll be a first and ten from the 37. And we've got to minimize mistakes, Pat, in the big plays. So that's on the, on the our defensive side. The offensive side, we've got to do sustained drives and take advantage of the miscues and the, and the uh, mismatchups. Jaron fakes the handoff to DeShields. The shield safety valve gathers it in across midfield, 40-yard line. Marcus cuts inside, 30, still on his feet. The longest run in a flash uniform for the former Lackawanna College standout. And he leaked out, provided his quarterback, Jiren Russell, with a safety valve and then carries the mail all the way down inside the red zone. Jiren did the fake into the line. They, they sucked the, the defense in. The Shields came to the outside, nice little flat pass, and then he, it's, it's uh, yards after catch, Pat. He did a great job. Marcus got here in January of 2020. They fake it to the Shields. It's a fly pattern into the end zone. Is it caught? It is. Touchdown, Katero Summers. The Flash able to get the running game going with the Shields, and then a perfect touch on the ball to the left corner for Katero. Two touchdowns for Summers a week ago, and he gets the flash on the board early with the scoring grab there. Pat, we talked to the coaches about Katero Summers. He was behind EJ. And so without the year playing, EJ transfers out. Katero comes to the forefront. He has speed. He has great hands. And you can see Jairo put that ball right on where he needed to put it. Alex Schmoke, the... Red shirt freshman puts it through the uprights. Point after is good, and the flash. You get it down inside the 20 on the ground, and then the touch pass by Jiren Russell to Katero Summer. Schmokes point after is good, and the flash. Boy, you couldn't have scripted it any better if you're SFU. You get the football to start, and you go down, and in short order, 
put six on the board. And Pat, they mixed up the pass and the run. Well, something, and it's a minute and a half it took us to t drive this field to do this. And you and I have known in the past, if we have a good passing game, we never had a good running game, and vice versa. This year, Five star Mitsubishi Altoona offers the. And not to take away from Norfolk State, they do have a true balanced attack. They'll average 428 yards a game. They're averaging 225 rushing and 203 in the air. So they do have a balanced attack. So now we got to see what our defense can, how they can respond and see where we go. Well, Marco told us yesterday, fans in our meeting, that Katera is a different person when the lights go on. And there are guys like that, that they, once, you know, the, that clock starts, uh, they have uh, a flip, a switch that they can flip and, Boy, he had what concentration it took on that ball. That ball was in the air quite a while for him to track it and then be able to bring it in in that corner of the end zone. That was impressive. Impressive pass. Jaron put that right where he had to to keep that from getting intercepted and put on the numbers. All right, Schmoke will kick it off. I'm anxious to get in the defense side, Pat, because we've had some real surprises, according to Coach Lewis and to Coach uh, Pecora, and it's, uh, we'll see how they play out here in this second. Schmoke puts his right foot into it. And it is going to go through the back of the end zone. Be a touchback. Take it out to the 25 for the Spartans. That drive for St. Francis, capped by the 17-yard catch by Katero Summers from Russell. Four plays, 77 yards, just a minute and a half off the clock. And the Flash able to strike early in this non-conference matchup with the Spartans. Yeah, you got no. You were still working on the keys to the game for the Flash, and as if you decided to march it down the field in short order. Yeah, we talked about the defensive keys and the offensive keys again: sustained drives, no turnovers, um, and, and no penalties. No, for lack of a better word, no stupid penalties. Penalties that would put us in a down the situation where we're ready to get off the field, and next thing you know, we give them give them new life again. So that's going to be the key. Jiren already two for two for 63 yards. A lot of that on that check down pass to to Shields. He has two carries for 14 yards. All right, first look at the talented quarterback, Jawan Carter. He works out of the pistol. He's going to go airborne. Is there a flag? No flag. Boy, we got lucky there. Is a little bit of clutching and grabbing going on. Breon Noel on the coverage over here, and it falls incomplete. He's not big, Jay. Uh, Carter, uh, in terms of his size, uh, not a not a, a big player, but, uh, again, a skilled player. He can move the football through the air as well as on the ground. It's his third season, Pat, and he can run as well as pass, and he has speed. He's a Walton, Walter Payton Award. On the watch list for the Walter Payton Award, there's a handoff to J.J. Davis, the redshirt freshman, Transfer from the University of Cincinnati. He was the MEAC Rookie of the Week after picking up 121 yards and a couple of touchdowns on eight carries last week against Elizabeth City. He gets it from Carter and moves the sticks for the Spartans. First and 10 at their own 48-yard line. Carter goes right, overshoots the intended receiver, that was to Kendall James. It'll fall incomplete. He's also a transfer. They have a number of transfers. This, as do both these teams. To Kendall James is a transfer from Coastal Carolina. And, Jay, that's probably just looking at the, at the landscape of the NCAA that's going to uh, happen with more frequency. Players are going to move around a bit more than they did in the past with the role changes. And that transfer report will open up a whole new game for football, for college, and basketball. Room between the tackles. That was Davis. He picks up six. It'll bring up a third and four from the 49. Pat, he's not very big. He's 5'9", 170 pounds, but he's very quick. And, again, we talked about with the coaches the speed of this team that we're playing today. They, their skill players are very fast, and they, they do great routes. He transferred in the spring of 2020, did Davis. Nobody over here on the left side. Davis, easy pickings. Inside the 30, and defense had swung the other way, and Carter finds Davis. So Norfolk State, like St. Francis, moving the ball effectively early. And, Jay, I anticipate, given the, 
the way these two offensive offenses have played the last week and, and even uh, against the, the guarantee schools, we'll see some points this afternoon. That we will. And, and they, they both played our FBS schools very tough. Yeah. So this is why this is a good matchup to see what we are today. Cameron Brent rides sidecar to Carter this time. He'll get to the football. He's a redshirt senior out of Atlanta, Georgia. Missed the 2019 season with a torn ACL. Going back to 18 at 270 yards on 70 carries. And he carries the football down to the 23-yard line. And they're mixing it up, Pat. They're mixing up with the pass and the run just like we did. They're effective on that. And that's why when they get something they like, they keep running it at you. Two to the right, two down here on the left side. Going to fake the handoff to Brent, looking to throw his Carter. He fires incomplete. He was trying to find Daquan Felton, a redshirt freshman out of Portsmouth, Virginia, but Carter overshot him. Bring up third down. I would anticipate a run on this one, Pat, because they've been picking up some yardage. Sticks are at the 19, so they need three. It's a third and three from the 22. One in the slot and in the backfield with Carter to the left and the right are Raquan Smith and Brent. And my partner called it. And the flash defense is up for the challenge. In the middle, plugging the hole. For SFU, that was Martin Foray, and we were talking to the coaches uh, about his performance, and, boy, he has been dynamite through three games. He has been all over the field. If he's not making the tackle, he's coming in to finish somebody off. Right. He's been all over the Northeast Conference. He's just been all over the place. He's been a great surprise. Here. So it's a fourth and one. They're going to go for it. Pushing ahead is Carter, and he'll have it, and that will move the stick. So a good surge by the offensive line as Coach Odoms decides – not to attempt the field goal on a fourth and one, and he moves the sticks first down for the Spartans inside the 20 at about the 17. And I don't blame him for getting behind that offensive line, Pat. He's got some big kids, big young men on that front offensive line for him to push through. Glad you could join us. About four and a half minutes in, second home game of the 2021 season. There's a handoff right side. Some room to work. That is Raekwon Smith, and he gets down inside the five, pushed out at the three, knocking him out of bounds was Gio Von Sanders, the redshirt junior out of Jeanette, Pennsylvania, but a lot of running room over there. And as you mentioned, the line has played well, and those backs, when they've gotten in space, at least here in the early going, they've been able to pick up some chunks of yardage. Yeah, Wagner was similar to so that. He had to make an adjustment with them because they ran the triple. So if they get ahead of steam, you got to get him in the backfield before they get a chance. Carter hands it off. That's Raekwon Smith. He's knocking on the door. Is he in? No. He's going to be brought down at the one. There for St. Francis on the stop. That was Jalen Parks, the sophomore out of Dallas, Georgia. It'll be second and goal. Got to believe they're going to try and pound it in here, Jay being this close to that end zone. Carter will work out of the pistol. He is one to the left, one to the right. Smith in the backfield. Handoff. Smith, end zone, yes. Touchdown, Spartans. So they go for it on fourth down. On a fourth and one, they opt not to try the field goal, and they are able to find their first points of the afternoon on the one-yard touchdown run by Raquan Smith. On to attempt the point after is Josh Nardone. You have to give him credit, Pat. They responded, mixed up the pass and the run, kept us on our heels, moved right down the field. Richard Sr. out of Virginia Beach, Virginia. Out of the hold of Stuart Anderson, Nardone's kick is up, and it's good. And two quick scoring drives, one for the Flash, one for the Spartans. And we are even at 7 with 9.19 to play. We'll take a short break, be back. Flash will have the football, 7-7. Seven, seven. Flash and Spartans, you're watching Red Flash football on Northeast Conference front row. 
Five Star Mitsubishi Altoona offers the best warranty, the best price, best buying and ownership experience. That's right, we're the best of the best. Incredible seven-passenger Outlander, awesome Outlander Sport, fun-to-drive Lantern, or the sensible G4 Amarone. New 2018 Mitsubishis, only $16,988. Uh-huh, only $16,988. Five Star Mitsubishi Altoona, the best of the best, only at... Five Star Mitsubishi Altoona. It doesn't get better than this. customers um, often come to us and say, I'm having this event, give me some ideas. We've done everything from logo wear to really nice jackets to promotional items for member giveaway. I like that it's very hassle-free. It is very streamlined. It's easy. And the Damon team have never let me down. Welcome back to the golf field. Pat Farbaugh, Jay Roberts with you. Josh Nardone just booted it through the uprights for the point after. Kickoff will go out of bounds, so the Flash will get some penalty yardage on their first set of downs, or their second set of downs here in this second straight home game. That drive, impressive for Coach Dawson Odom's team. 12 plays, 70 yards, 4 minutes, 5 seconds. Smith took it across from a yard out. Carter just one for four for 23 yards, but most of the yardage on that drive coming on the ground. Smith has 18 on three carries. J.J. Davis, 18 on a couple of carries. Pat, that pass for them was a broken defensive play, evidently, on ours, because he was so wide open. First and 10 at the 35 for the flash after the penalty on the kickoff. Going to hand it off. A little trick play by St. Francis on the end of us. Judah Tome. Tome carries it out near midfield, first down yardage. He was in motion, and Jiren gave it to him, and the freshman out of York, Pennsylvania. We talked about him yesterday, uh, Jay, in the coaches' meeting. Marco talked about just how quickly he picks things up, and he picked up the first down there. Pat, I was totally impressed with number four, tight end Hunter Brown. He came out and cleared that end. He got right in behind him. Hunter did a great job making that block to get him free. Marco gave Judah incredible praise. Said in terms of picking up a system and a scheme, uh, has picked it up as quickly as any player he's coached. Marcus bounces off of the defender, and he has daylight. 30, 20, the shield taken down inside the five, saving the touchdown for Norfolk State. That was roughing, but the shields galloping. Into Spartans' territory, and the Flash are knocking on the door again. You notice the Shields did a great job hitting the hole, didn't find it, bounced it out, twisted, turned to the outside, and took off. First and goal from the five. He just simply outran the secondary there. Yes, he did. So another big run for the Shields. He'll line up in the backfield behind Russell. Tight end goes in motion. It's a pitch to Marcus across the five. Tries to hurdle a defender. He's brought down inside the five. Call it the three. That was Marcus Hall, a redshirt junior linebacker out of Woodbridge, Virginia. It'll be a second in goal for the flash. Marcus came into the game with 151 yards, leads the team, 4.2 a carry. As his number called again, test the inside, nothing there. Tried to bounce it out. The ball came out. Let's see who has it. The ball came out. Marcus initially stopped, tried to bounce it to the right side. Did he get it back? It came out. Bob Cannon's our referee. Some of his crew members in there trying to sort it out. And Norfolk State came up with it. The second effort by Marcus, you like to see him try to make something out of that play, but he took a lick. It squirted out, and Norfolk State dodges a bullet there as they're going to come up with the football inside their own five. Great, great effort on his part, wanting to get in that end zone, Pat. Um, you got to hand it to uh, Norfolk State, how tough they are in that, in that red zone. They were really stacking them up. Yeah, I didn't get a chance, fans, to see who hit him. It was a good shot, though. It was helmet on football. Yeah. And it was uh, came out, and then I didn't I didn't have a good feeling because there were green shirts that spotted it uh, before the red shirts were able to 
get involved. And he'll spot it at the three. Carter will bring out the Spartans' offense, and he'll line up from the pistol inside his own end zone. One to the left, one to the right for the redshirt senior. Handoff will go inside. A yard, maybe two. Flash plug the middle. Give Davis two. Out to the five. It'll be second and eight. James Watkins was holding his ground there, Pat, for us to make sure that he didn't get any farther because, you know, those backs are hitting these holes really quick, and they're getting the holes, so we got to make sure we, we stop and stuff them. Fast-moving first half. Inside of seven minutes already, it's 7-7. Seven, seven. Of course, the Shields fumble. There's flags. First flags. Well, second flag. First special teams flag came for Norfolk State on the kickoff. Now they have a false start. That'll push them half the distance back to the – between the one and the two. NSU picked to finish second in the MEAC. It's a new-look MEAC this season. South Carolina State, they're the preseason favorite, according to a poll of the coaches and the sports information directors. But three schools left the MEAC uh, before the start of this season. North Carolina A&T went to the Big South, and both Florida A&M and Bethune-Cookman, they will join the SWAC. There's a screen pass intended for Anthony Williams. That falls incomplete. Uh, and that leaves just six schools now in the MEAC, Norfolk State, NC Central, South Carolina State, Howard, Delaware State, and, of course, as Jay mentioned, the team we will play next week, Morgan State. Uh, the Spartans, Jay, you got to like their chances. They were 4-1. and one. Again, this is a while ago, uh, but back in 19, they were 4-1 and one against the other five schools. So you got to believe that they'll be in contention with South Carolina State and the MEAC when the smoke clears. Well, they will, Pat. Yep. Jalen Parks did a great job of deflecting that pass. He's played well this year. He yes, really has. He has. Third down, and flags fly again. Is is that going to be another delay a game? It's against, uh, yeah. Norfolk. It's another penalty. So that's going to push them back further. So after getting the ball on the fumble by the shield, Spartan miscues have sent them the wrong way. This is going to be all the way back, all, just shy of the end line inside the one. It's a big play, Pat, defensively. We've got to make sure they don't get anywhere. We can give them a couple yards, but we got to make sure we hold them to this fourth down. And if you're Norfolk State, you're careful here. You're on the road. You don't want to make a mistake. They're going to air it out. Bringing it in. Oh, we talked about the touch pass. No, it's incomplete. incomplete. Smith had it. The redshirt senior of Richmond, Virginia, had it. What a great throw by Carter, but he was unable to take it uh, and finish the catch, and it's incomplete. The flash will get it back. Good throw by Carter. Carter perfect throw. Great, great throw. I'm, uh, tell you what, that was, that was a close call for me, Pat. Uh, uh, he, he had it initially. It looked like he was going to bring that in, but was unable to complete the catch as he headed to the ground. He didn't have any control. Christian Massey broke that up at the end, Pat. So evidently he didn't have control enough that we thought. Ryan Richter comes out to punt it away. And, boy, he's going to send. The flash return, man. Josh McGrigg all the way back to the 47. McGrigg's going to try to reverse the field. He gets into Norfolk State territory before he is wrapped up by Cameron Foreman, a redshirt sophomore out of Mechanicsville, Virginia. So Richter punts it out of trouble. And the flash will get it back after the giveaway, see if they can bounce back. Pat, the punt was a great punt from that their end zone. He boomed that ball 50 yards the punters this year have been absolutely tremendous. Our punter, Jordan Salvi, he's been on Earth East Conference twice. I mean, he is huge with his foot, getting the ball over 50 yeah. yards. And they've had some issues with punting, Jay. They had two block punts returned for touchdowns, Norfolk State did, against Toledo. Or that score would have been a lot closer. And they also, against uh, the Hens, uh, against Toledo, they fumbled a kickoff inside the five, and, you know, we saw Toledo give Notre Dame all they could handle. So you take away the mistakes, two block punts for touchdowns, and a fumble on a kickoff that resulted in a score for Toledo, and that's a much closer game. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. Second and 10 for SFU from the 45 after the good punt return by McGrigg. Two to the right, one to the left. Marcus riding sidecar with Jiren. Check that. 
That is not Marcus. That was Lavelle Armstead, the redshirt sophomore out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. And he picks his way down inside the 40 before he is knocked out of bounds. He had six carries for 21 yards at Delaware, did Lavelle, and also carried the mail a half dozen times for 31 yards, found the end zone a week ago against Wagner. He runs the ball hard. Lavelle's a tough little runner. Look, he's, he's got some speed. He's got some strength. He's small, but he can run. He's got, he's got a, a motor on him, Pat. Loves to play football. We're going to say he was knocked out of bounds at the NSU 41. So that's where the flash will have it. Inside of six to play, we're even at seven. Flash moving the football. Check down to Shields. First down yardage inside the 25. Down to the 23-yard line. Wrapped up by Ruffin. But it's another first down for number 10 in the SFU offense. The Shields comes out of the backfield. Just a little drop, dump pass to him over the middle. Pat, it's wide open. Yards after catch, he's a tremendous runner. I mean, it's the first time I get to really see him play, and he's. There's a pass to Lizenby on the left side. Made one tackle or miss before he takes it down inside the 20. Marcus DeShields played for Lackawanna. The Falcons head coached by Mark Duda. What a tremendous junior college program over in Lackawanna. We mentioned in the pregame the outstanding defender Tyler Long for Norfolk State. That was a former teammate of Marcus's. Uh, Samir Parks, also a Lackawanna product. And I think Lackawanna was second runner-up in the country two years ago. They were. The number two-year program. Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. They defeated the Falcons in the title game that year. Good pursuit that time by Deshaun Dixon, the redshirt senior out of Chesapeake, showed his speed, able to take down Jiren for the QB sack from behind. That was a good Effort play that time by Dixon. Pat, this kid's 6'5", 260 pounds, plus the speed he has to run down Jiron. Yeah. We did a meeting yesterday, and we were talking to Marco. He said they have long players, they have speed, they have playmakers on the defensive side, and we're seeing that. Third and 15 after the takedown by Russell. Two right, two left. Jiron sits in the pocket, now steps ahead, fires over the middle. It's incomplete. He was trying to connect with Judah Tome, but it falls incomplete. And he's another one that the coaches are really high on, Judah Tome. He's a redshirt freshman, six foot, 180 pounds. They're really high on him and his ability to play. So they'll bring Schmoke out. He's two for two on field goal attempts this season, the redshirt freshman out of Bellwood, Annis. And this one is going to be a 45-yarder. He had a 42-yarder against Delaware two weeks ago. Looking to connect from 45 out. Kick is up. It's long enough. Schmoke splits the uprights and gives the flash the lead. Career-long 45-yarder for Alex. And they capitalize after the good punt return by McGrigg and the big play by DeShields. He puts it through from 45 out, and it's a three-point lead for the flash. So a good bounce back, Jay, after the fumble by Marcus DeShields. They get the football back in his hands, and they reclaim the lead. We'll take a break. 3.56 to play. First quarter, Flash lead the Spartans 10-7. You're watching Great Flash Football on Northeast Conference front row. Become that someone has a special meaning to, to the guys in our program and to our staff. Because of Maurice Stokes, the greatest player ever to play at St. Francis, and his relationship with Jack Twyman. It's in our locker room. It's a slogan that we ask our guys to live their lives by. And uh, so many times we think about becoming that someone and having a huge impact in something as simple as a smile or holding the door or you know, the pleases and the thank yous. Um, it's, it's a special part of our program, and uh, having Maurice and Jack have an award named after them as the greatest teammate. Certainly, it's something that our guys see every day. We have it uh, hanging on a, uh, an end cap in our locker, and our guys see it every day on their, uh, their plaque in their locker room. And over the course of their time here at St. Francis, becoming that someone is... Taking at the two, stretching the field for Norfolk State. That is Davis. We do have a flag on the play. Good bounce back drive for us if you after giving it away on the fumble when they were knocking on the door. Uh, DeShields played an instrumental role, so good to see him 
able to contribute after uh, a good effort play came out at the end. Yeah. Uh, but he set the flash up for that field goal by Schmoke. I think the one thing I noticed with Jaron Russell lately, <clears throat> Pat, and being a new quarterback to us, when he gets into situations and scrambles, he just throws the ball a little too hard for those shorter. Because if he had just dropped that to him instead of putting so much zip on it, and I understand why he did it, but I think that pass could have been completed. It could have been a whole different ball game. Illegal block in the back on the kickoff return. So that's going to cost Norfolk State. That drive for the Flash fans, seven plays, 17 yards. Schmoke split the uprights from 45 out. It'll be a first and 10 for the Spartans after they step off the penalty yards from their own 10. Glad you could join us on NEC Front Row. With it shaping up to be a, a dandy 10-7 flash lead. We expected fireworks. We've got them so far. Hand off right side. That's Brent. Led at Holmes Community College. And actually led all of junior college as a sophomore at Holmes back in 2017 with 152.6 yards per game. He missed the 19th season because of the torn ACL. And I don't think we mentioned this, but Norfolk State also opted not to have a spring season. So they have not played since that fall of 19. Same as SFU who opted out of competing in the spring season in the Northeast Conference. Brent has his number called again, and he takes it just across the 20 to bring up a first down. They move the sticks for the Spartans. NFS goes up-tempo. Pass out to the left flat. That's Smith as Carter found him, and he's close to another first down. They like to dump that off into the flats, Pat, and let their, let their receivers take over because they do have the speed. So that's what they're doing. They're just, just dropping that off and let them make their, their plays. Smith was preseason all MEAC. He had three catches for 51 yards, most of those on a 47-yard touchdown catch against Toledo. There's a flag at the end of the play that will go against Norfolk State. So the first down will stay on the board, and they're going to move it back to the 15. Well, fans, it's 2021, and six years ago, first ever Northeast Conference Championship trophy was hoisted here at DeGaulle Field after a win over Central Connecticut State. It feels like yesterday, stepping up the pocket is Carter. Well, he took a hit at the end there uh, of that play. On that tackle was Shamar Hill. And we have some of the guys back. Uh, we have such loyal alums here. And, and some of those guys from that 16 team are back. And, and one of them, and we're going to have a couple of them join us. And one of them is standing to my left. Jay just handed him his headset. And I'll let you know who that is after this play. It's a second and eight. Handoff's going to go up the middle. That's Brent. Brent with gets all that penalty yardage back. And. He's going to have his team just a yard shy of the first down. The first guy that I'm going to talk to, he engineered a late-game drive against Duquesne that is etched in the memory of Flash fans. And he was sort of pushed <laughs> behind his O-line. At O-line, a good surge on a foggy, rainy night against the Dukes. And that's Zach Dreher. Good to see you. How you doing, Zach? I'm doing great. Happy to be back. It's great to see you, man. Great to see you as well. Uh, they are going to give him a first down. They're going to say he got enough yardage out across the 31. So Carter going to look right, finds his man. That's Smith again. We talked about how dangerous he is. He's pushed out of bounds over there by Geo. Bring up a second and eight. Zach, uh, it's, it's as clear as a bell in my mind. I'm guessing you were out there in the field. You still remember those plays like it was yesterday. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Especially the push, the late game uh, score against Duquesne under the lights. That was a, uh, that was a memorable night. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, many, many plays out here uh, to, be, to be remembered. It was a lot of fun. 14-10 went over the Dukes October 21st of 2016. Little shuffle pass. Man in motion took it from Carter. Flash were not fold. Looking to pitch it. Carter got it to Chris Butler. He's a redshirt freshman out of Glen Allen, Virginia. And uh, defense was up for the challenge. No gain on the play. It'll stay at. The 31. Flash and Dukes finished tied atop the NEC standings that year with identical 5-1 and one marks, but by virtue of a tiebreaker, 
SFU got the automatic bid to the FCS playoffs. Flags fly there, and they would go on and, and, and really put up a strong showing against Villanova in the FCS playoffs. First ever FCS playoff appearance in the school history. That drive that we're reflecting on 11 plays, 63 yards, and that was a tight group, Zach. Uh, and I know we've talked on previous broadcasts. Uh, you guys have, have stayed very close. A lot of you guys still communicate with each other regularly. If you could just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So we've uh, we've been excited for this year. Uh, obviously, with last year, it was a little tough to, to kind of get together. But we got a lot of guys back this year. Uh, probably 12 or 15 of us here uh, attending the game. So we're excited, happy to all get together. Um, it's been a blast getting back and seeing, seeing the team back in action. Stadium full and all that, but yeah, it's been it's been awesome. Um, you know, kind of a little bit of the pregame tailgate. We're all hanging out, telling old stories together. Uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun reflecting on those good times. I still remember you were either a freshman or a sophomore. Throw over the middles, complete. Carter finds Marquis Ellington. He's a graduate student out of Neptune, New Jersey. He already has his bachelor's degree in marketing. He's pursuing a master's in cybersecurity. I still can remember we played Fordham under the lights. You went down uh, to the uh, workout room at the hotel and met your dad. <laughs> he was on a bike getting a workout into a treadmill. I can't remember which. I uh, got on the machine next to him. We started talking. Luke Dreyer's dad. And, and how's he doing? He's doing well. He's doing well. He's, uh, Zach Dreyer's dad. Your dad's Luke. I'm he's sorry. following my sister. Uh, she's playing, in Maine, uh, playing field hockey at the University of Maine. University of Maine. Yes, every weekend he's following her. And I remember her coming along to games when you yeah. were playing. Oh, yeah. It's, uh, it's weird how the tables have turned, you know. I'm, I'm following her and, and every weekend and, and all that. But, yeah, he's he's enjoying it. Um, you know, he's retired, so he's got some, oh, he is time, retired. To, okay. some time to kind of uh, spend on the road and all that. So he, he makes every game, which is awesome. That's the end of the first, Vance. It's a 10-7 lead for St. Francis. In the booth with us is the quarterback of the 2016 Northeast Conference Championship football team for SFU. That is Zach Dreyer, how is your uh, sister? Uh, what year is she up at Maine, and how's uh, how are the Black Bears doing in uh, field hockey? She is a junior, and they're doing well. They they were off to a tough start. They had a really hard uh, uh, out of conference schedule to start the season, um, but they bounced back. They've won a couple in a row now. Uh, they started up their conference games last week uh, and had a weekend sweep, so they're off to a good start. Good, sure. good. Now, do you? Uh, I mean, you look in, in pretty good shape. Have you? Uh, have Picked up any uh, intramural, any uh, any leagues uh, since you uh, left the football field here at SFU? Um, I played a little bit of basketball. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, haven't been able to find a football league yet. Um, if I can get in a flag league or something like that, just where I can throw the ball a little bit, uh, knock some rust off the arm, that'd be great. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I recently moved from Pittsburgh back to my hometown of Hershey. Um, so with the, with the move and the transition, and obviously the, the past year, it's been a little tough, but definitely looking forward to it. Uh, I did a little bit of high school coaching last year, uh, just kind of helped out. Where at? Uh, at Hershey. At Hershey High, okay. Uh, so I love doing that, love being involved in the game. Uh, I would love to be able to play if I can. Uh, so, yeah, any league, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, but just haven't had the opportunity yet. And for the fans that, uh, who don't know, uh, that is also uh, Coach Valerio, Coach V's alma mater. Here's the first play of the second quarter. Carrying the football is Raquan Smith. SFU defenders, a number of guys there. First one to meet him, uh, that was Jalen Parks. Uh, Chris Valerio, a Hershey grad and, and recruited his first Hershey recruit was the guy standing to my left Zach Dreher uh, did a uh, work bring you back to Hershey is that the what precipitated the move from Pittsburgh back to your hometown it did yep uh, working in Elizabethtown uh, I'm a financial advisor now so work brought me home um, I've always wanted to be home and, and knew that was kind of the, the plan eventually um, but first job out of, out of school took me to Pittsburgh um, but yeah happy to be home and uh, love me there. hopefully I can Help out with the uh, high school team here in the future. Smith on the carry takes it to midfield. Bring up a second and seven. Talking to Zach Dreyer, quarterback of that 16 championship squad. Carter surveys, rolls. A lot of time, fires over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Ellington, and the ball falls incomplete. 
I saw Jimmy. Uh, any of your other linemen uh, back today? Yeah, there's a pile of them. So, uh, offensive linemen, we got Jimmy, we got Evan Ferguson, we got Christian Eubanks. Oh, Evan's okay. Uh, we got Solomon, he's back. Uh, Brandon Taylor's back. Oh, wow. Yeah, we, we got Matty, Matty V is back. Um, I know there's been a couple other guys that I've heard are here. I've not seen them yet. Um, I'm sure I'm missing a couple of the names. But, uh, yeah, we, we got a good crew. Um, it's, it's been a lot of fun, it's, and, and we all haven't seen each other in a couple of years. And before the game, it just picked back up like uh, like the last time we saw each other. Isn't that but special, the way you yeah, could pick really, up right where you left off? Really cool. I actually, uh, a friend of mine turned 50 and, and drove down a high school friend and uh, a couple of weeks ago, and we went to the Tennessee Pitt game, and you can just pick it up like that. There's people that uh, you care about and you love. and that uh, Kevin Johnson on the carry there be a fourth and two. It's going to be a punting situation, so they bring out Ryan Richter. He punted out of his own end zone earlier this game, signaling for the fair catch and making it. That is Josh McGrigg. Guy that I'm talking to, he's a throwback. He used to, uh, a la Danny White, he used to punt it while we're talking about the punt by, by Richter. Uh, and I'm sure I asked you this at some point uh, along the way during your career, but uh, was that a facet of the game that you enjoyed, or was that something that you were good at that they 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 put you there? Is that a role you wanted to uh, assume in addition to the to the quarterback? Well, initially, not really. I I had always punted in high school, and it was just kind of you know I had a had a decent leg, and I was already out there catching snaps, um, so just kind of dropped me back and kick it. And my freshman year, our punter got hurt. And for camp, we didn't have a punter. So I said, told the coaches, you know, I used to kick in high school. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how good I am at it, but I can go out there and give it a try and ended up working out. But, yeah, I loved it. I, uh, I loved the ability to be back there doing a little bit of both, being able to punt, have the ability to throw, run, do all that, kind of keep people on their toes. Uh, but, yeah, I, I definitely enjoyed it as it evolved into a kind of a dual position thing. Hand off to Lavelle, but fans, the interesting point to note here, Justin Slawoski, the transfer from Pitt, uh, quarterback, sophomore out of Greensburg, Pennsylvania, played at Hempfield. He is in there. So we do not have any word from the field as Armstead breaks the tackle, has first down yardage out across the 25. We saw Jiren get taken down from behind on that previous set of downs. Hopefully everything is okay. I'm looking for him on the sidelines. Uh, but Slawoski in there right now as Armstead moves the stick. So we'll try to get you information uh, as it is made available to us on the status of Jiren Russell. All right, he's standing there as Jay and, and Zach point him out to me, uh, not being attended to by trainers. So uh, did not play last week, driving around all the way. Both did play against Eastern Michigan earlier this year. Slawoski fires, and he finds his man in North Fall State territory. The transfer from Pitt hooks up with redshirt freshman Hunter Brown out of Wellsboro, PA, on a very well-thrown ball. Slawoski was moving to his left and fired on the run, and the flash looked to go up tempo here, a first and ten after the long pass to Brown from the Spartan 35. Empty backfield. Sawaski fires right side. Listen, B. Football. Give them five. It'll be a second and five. So it looks promising that there's nothing wrong with Jiren. They're looking to move the football here and giving the Spartans a little bit of a different look. I thought of you. I thought of you uh, last week in my public speaking class. The students were sharing their topics and. One of them is going to present on fly fishing. I said, I remember a long time ago, freshman, first summer semester, Absolutely, yep. shared a little information on fly fishing. Oh, yeah. That was, that was, that was my uh, introduction to St. Francis, uh, first professor. Had a blast. That, that was it. Oh, Jimmy was in there, too, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah. So, so Jimmy and I went to rival high schools um, and ended up joining forces joining forces and we're roommates and that was our first class together so it was a good way to kind of introduce us to to st francis and all that it had to offer it was over the summer so i yeah, see central was, dolphin is that lower dolphin. lower dolphin lower okay dolphin. i remember you guys talking about the rivalry they're basically in our backyard so that's been a good rivalry for years it's, it's fun to talk back on that and, and uh, relive the memory who won last year lower dolphin or hershey Ooh. um 
You know what? I don't even know if they played last year. Like, okay. I think some of the seasons got cut short. Um, yeah, some of the games because but, uh, of uh, Jimmy. Jimmy won his last battle between he and I, so he he reminds me all the time. I won every other one, except <laughs> the last one. But uh, yeah, it's it's fun. And off goes left side. Ten fifteen to play. Well, Zach, it's great to see you, man. Great it's always a pleasure. I, that's awesome. You ran down some of those guys that are back. Yeah. Please, I, I probably won't see them. Let them know that Jay and I said hello. Absolutely. And uh, you know that uh, that memory. I believe when they when they uh, the good Lord calls me, I'll still remember that foggy, rainy night, oh, and I still remember them just willing you across the goal yeah. line, so yeah. pushing push and shoving from behind. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> A legend in, in flash football history, Zach Dreyer. And, and you talk about a leader and you talk about a competitor, a guy that, uh, you know, the nicks and bruises they accumulated over the years. And he, he carried the football a lot and took some hits. But we were blessed to have you then and we're fortunate to have you up here in the booth today. Oh, thank thanks, Zach. Yeah, good to see you. Thanks, Zach. Inside of 10 to play, 10-7 in favor of St. Francis. Guys like that that make this program special, Jay. Zach was a special player, brought in that caliber that we needed, him, Jimmy Marks, and all the guys that he brought with him. And that whole team was just exceptional talent. Can't say enough about Zach's leadership. It was just tremendous. Let's take a break. going to play. Teams are going to go to the sidelines. 9.05 to go. 10-7 in favor of SFU. You're watching Red Flash Football on Northeast Conference front row. When Slaby out, Jordan Slaby, the junior out of Bristow, Virginia. Had a couple down by Ray Crittenden at the one last week against Wagner. This was going to bounce into the end zone. It'll be a touchback, and Wagner will have it at, the, or excuse me, the Spartans will have it at the 25. Scores from around the league. <laughs> Speaking of the Seahawks. 11.50 goes second quarter there in Philadelphia. It's 7-7. Wagner and Temple tied in the early stages of the second quarter. The Blue Devils are down in Miami to take on the Hurricanes today. Second ever matchup with an ACC team for CCSU. And the Canes lead the Blue Devils 7 to nothing. four minutes into that game. Dartmouth and Sacred Heart is a 1.30 kick. 2 p.m. Merrimack. will play at Delaware State. And this evening, Bryant and Marist. Nothing doing there. Swarming SFU defense. Gio Vaughn Sanders able to wrap up the running back. Big loss on the play there for Norfolk State. You can tell, Pat, that offensive line of Norfolk State does do the job. They are... Big line here, 290, 300, 270. Right side. Davis carries. Gets out just shy of the 25-yard line. I'll tell you what, the half is moving quickly, fans. We are Midway through, a little past the midway point of this second quarter, 
SF, you want to remind fans, at the intermission, we are going to have an interview with the director of athletics here at St. Francis, James Donner. He'll be up to talk about some of the behind the scenes. Beautiful open field tackle there for St. Francis coming up and laying the lumber. That was J.T. Esparza, an inside linebacker out of Blinn College, Texas, and did not let the running back elude his grasp. And so after a slaby punt, quick three and out, and the Flash are going to get it back as Ryan Richter comes back out for Coach Odom's team. We're going to talk to James about some of the behind the scenes on making that first ever game against an FBS program, the trip to Ypsilanti, Michigan, what went into SFU having the opportunity to take on Eastern Michigan, as well as some of the other goings-ons in SFU Athletics. That's coming up at the break. Getting out of the way of that one is McGregor, and it's going to roll down inside the 15 to the 11. That's where SFU will have it to start this drive with 6.43 remaining in the first half. And Pat Gyron Russell's back. Yeah, it didn't. Uh, once you pointed him out, he looked fine. Uh, and, and you know, quite frankly, Slawoski uh, did a nice job, made a great throw, and acquitted himself well. He scored late in that game against Eastern Michigan uh, and was able to direct a drive, admittedly, against some of EMU's uh, second string players in that fourth quarter, but he gets a chance here. And he started us in the hole and he got us out. Justin took us the whole way down the field. Flash 10, Spartan 7, Russell back in there. Played at Timberview High School, played quarterback and safety during his high school days and threw that one out of bounds. Receiver over this way, that was Hunter Brown. It falls incomplete. He was pressured, had to throw it away. Similar play that uh, Justin threw, Pat. Right, rolled to his left and tried to right. try to. He hooked up with Brown, did uh, did Justin, and that pass also intended for Brown, but falls incomplete. We were talking to uh, Marco yesterday in our in our meeting, and well, he really he's really been impressed with Hunter Brown. Uh, feels like uh, that young man out of Wellsboro uh, has a whole lot of potential. Carry goes out near the fifteen yard line. Yeah, Pat, and he was an offensive lineman, Brown was, and we converted him to a tight end from Wellsboro. Marco caught him old school, has embraced the tight end position. He was a two-time Northern Tier League uh, player of the year, also wrestled and competed on the track and field team for Wellsboro High School. A lot of good hunting up there in that Northern Tier. That's God's country up there. A lot, of, a lot of beautiful wooded areas in that part, part of our state. Third and six out of the pistol. Jiren surveys, wants to go right. Beg your pardon, left, looking for Katero. Summer's got a hand on it. Got his right hand, but couldn't. Tried to bring it in and pin it against his body. Nothing doing. And So after a three and out for Norfolk State, The Spartans' defense holds and forces Slaby back out on the field to punt it away. It was kind of a little bit high for that pass. Throw, Pat, to um, Selby, but to tell you what, he tried, almost brought it in. Slaby was the NEC Special Teams Player of the Week fans. Last week, second time he's earned that award. Fair catch is made at the 45. How about his numbers last week, Jay? Seven punts for 48 yards. He had a 59-yarder at four inside the 20 and hung two up there that Ray Crittenden was able to get downfield and down at the one-yard line. So he's been he's been a real weapon for SFU here in the early going. Yeah, it's been a great find for us to bring him in, Pat. He's a transfer from Alderson, brought us. Averaging 42.3 entering today's game is 
couple of boots here this afternoon. All right, so Carter and the Norfolk State offense back on the field. They have the football at their own 45. Pistol, handoff, Brent takes it into flash territory. Or he give them six, maybe seven, as the Atlanta native able to get a full head of steam and take it. Yeah, they're actually going to spot it right. right at the midfield stripe. So it'll be second and four. Three to Jay and I's side of the field. One up top for Carter. Handoff left side. Hit. Brent was popped. Stayed on his feet. Fortunate to hang on to the football. He took a couple of shots. Finally brought down by Tremaine Stott, the red shirt sophomore out of Germantown, Maryland. Our Lady of Good Counsel product. And, Jay, he's played well. Tremaine has done a good job for SFU uh, in his first extended playing time in a flash uniform. Yes, he does, Pat. And it's really good to see. Again, we have a lot of youth, a lot of young talent that, uh, you know, sitting out a year, they're anxious to play. Stott had 11 stops last weekend against Wagner. Swarming defense. James Watkins there to bring down Raquan Smith, also in on the tackle for SFU was Jake Heupel, the outside linebacker out of Somerset. And guess what? Another three and out. So two three and outs for Norfolk State. Hey, does SFU's defense? Starting to make a statement here. And SFU is going to call a timeout. 4-13 to play. It's the first timeout called by Coach Valerio here in the first half. You know, Pat, as we said in the pregame, if Norfolk State sees something they like, they'll continue to run it. And that's what they're doing with this. These third down, these these fast three downs, both series, they see that inside tackle pushing out, and their running backs making the yard. So that's what they went to. They did three running plays in the last two series and came up short because they liked what they saw. But St. Francis was able to make an adjustment on that defense. Second home game of the season, and it was odd coming to the golf field and not seeing a familiar. Praise at St. Francis for many years. A.J. Anderson, former assistant football coach and director of facilities and operations for for a number of years. A.J. His uh, career has taken a different path. He earned his doctoral degree, and he is joining the faculty in the sports management program at Bowie State University. And I don't know if A.J. is listening. It's uh he and his wife are making that move, and uh, we wish him nothing but the best. He, it's a challenge. Uh, with uh, a lot of teams and, and, you know, a limited number of hours in the day to get everybody, uh, accommodate everyone with facilities. But, but And I know he's a good friend of yours, but A.J., he was – he was good at his craft and uh, both as good as a football coach, came out of Lock Haven, played football for the Bald Eagles, and we're going to miss him here in Loretto. Came out of Woody Hills in Pittsburgh and, and uh, came to St. Francis coach. I volunteered coach with him for five years. Went into academics in the athletic part of the academic world, and uh, now he's, he's going to be a, a true academic. Good he's going down in that uh, part of Maryland where uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of great SFU guys. Dante Neal's down there. Marcus Haynes. Uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of. Uh, it's a Marcus sort of a pocket Penny. for Marcus Penny's down there. So hit the ground running with all those great guys from our family here at St. Francis. Already has actually. He's been in contact with those guys, and I know he's excited to. To make the movie with his family, nothing but the best. Going to miss him here at SFU. Second and eight, three and a half to go, 10-7. Three to J and I side, one 
over there on the Norfolk State side for Jiren Russell. And that's going to go to Armstead. He tries to stiff arm Pierre Royster, but he's pushed out of bounds after a couple of yards. Royster's saying that he face masked him. Uh, officials disagree. Well, Pat, you can see we have a running game there. Mark keeps the shields and, and Lavelle, they, they've got, which you and I always talked over the years, what we need to offset that passing game has been a running game. And these gentlemen that they brought in, and really they're starting to help us balance out that attack that we need. Be a third and one here. Interesting formation for St. Francis there as they tried to get catch North Folk State off guard, but nothing doing. Going to be dropped for a loss. The ball carrier there. That's Armstead again. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. See, and that's my, going to bring Slaby out again. And my, my position right now, when I just saw what they did, Jerron Russell's a big kid. So I just keep him under Keep center. him on the line. It's a, it was a foot for a first down. <laughs> How many years have we been saying that? <laughs> <laughs> Why put that quarterback in the pistol when you got to get a yard? Well, he, he, did, he was under center, but he hit it off to the halfback who's two yards behind him. Yeah. Just let him, just let him push. I see what you're saying. Just let yeah. him push and keep it. Yeah. Well, and the guy that was just in here, how many, how many times did Dreyer do that? Yeah. You know, just, just let that line push and follow uh, Eubanks and Marks and those guys up front. It's basically what Norfolk did with uh, Carter on their, when they had their chance for fourth down. They just huddled in behind him and pushed him and got him a first down. This uh, Norfolk State team, they are looking to try to uh, generate some consistency. Since 2012, uh, it's, been, it's been vanilla. Uh, they've been 4-7 and seven five times, 4-8 uh, and eight once, and 5-7 and seven once. So they're trying to put this thing together and, and, and get on the other side of 500. Uh, in, in 2019, uh, the defense was a problem their last full season. They allowed 422 yards per game, uh, but they do believe that they have the weapons to compete in that new look MIAC this year. Football right side, that's John Johnson. He gets up near midfield. And they like to run that outside the tackle, Pat, because the quickness of these, these halfbacks, it's just a handoff and he goes to the outside. Call it a second and two, ball right at the 50, fake the handoff out to Smith. He has the first down. He's pushing it bounds inside the 45-yard line, knocking him out over there for St. Francis. That was Kerry Galloway, the redshirt sophomore out of Wilmington, Delaware. Played for head coach Zeb Blum's team at DuPont. Be a first and 10 for... Norfolk is there looking to score the go-ahead touchdown here. They trail 10-7. So, Jay, after touchdown for St. Francis on their first drive, an answer by Norfolk State, and then, of course, that's if you drove all the way inside the five before the fumble by DeShields, the defenses have begun to settle in a little bit. We've seen a number of three and outs here in the second quarter. Exactly, and again, Norfolk's running the outside perimeter, trying to get to the outside with their running backs. Second and four. Carter looking for Williams, threw it behind him. Bring up a third and long. And as you said, Pat, it's a fast first half. Got a minute and 11 left here in this quarter, second quarter. Third and four. Flash fans trying to cheer on the defense here. Trips to our side, one up top. 
Ball is batted. Knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Dwayne Majors. He's a red shirt sophomore out of Conwell, Egan Catholic. And now decision-making time for Norfolk State. They're in flash territory at the SFU 41. Outside of field goal range, SFU has two timeouts with a minute eight to play. See if Coach Odoms calls a timeout here to talk things over and let that play clock. I think they're going to punt it. Now he's going to run it, Pat. I think he's going to try to get it. Oh, yeah. He's going to try to get an interference call downfield. He just did call a timeout. Yeah. I, if I'm Dawson Odoms, I think I punt it away. I would not want to give. Jiren Russell, and, and with the flash with two timeouts, such a short field. At least get Schmoke into field goal range. I would probably try to pin them deep. And, uh, well, we'll see what they decide after the timeout. You know, my thinking in these games is always a little bit different. <laughs> I'm thinking do. he's going to put him in. He's going to throw a ball downfield, try to get an interference call, move, move him closer so they can kick a field goal. Now, what would you call? If you were in Valerio, or if you were in Coach Odom's shoes, would you punt this thing away, or would you do what you I'd just described? I'd punt it away. Yeah. And if I was Coach Valerio, I'd blitz him. There won't give him any time. No time to throw. But he's throwing a quick ball. But one thing you got to make sure your coverage downfield is solid because these are quick receivers. We know that. Or you hit somebody out of the backfield just to get a first down. First ever matchup between these two teams. Both the Flash and Norfolk State have a lot of first-time opponents for the Flash. Three of the first four, Eastern Michigan, Delaware, and Norfolk State, uh, first-time opponents. NSU, they played Toledo and Wake Forest, as we've talked about. And their homecoming game, and that's the first ever matchup between those two teams. Well, they don't bring the punter out, Jay. Yeah. He's got trips on this side, Pat, three receivers, which, again, I think he's going to try to go downfield if he's got the time, try to pick up an interference call. Believe it or not, by today's games. Well, they're going to take the penalty, I think. Take the delay. Another uh, no, reset in the game clock to 108. Okay, they have that, and now they got Carter standing at about the flash 46. Waits for the signal from the back judge. Try to get the flash to jump, and they do. We'll see if that was a false start. I think it was an offside, and if so, it's going to move the ball a little, make it a little bit more of a manageable fourth down. Still out of field goal range. range. Well, hold on. Hold the phone. It's a false start. I thought, I didn't see anybody move up front, but the flash will take it. So the penalty goes against the green and white, and that's going to make it much more difficult. And now they will bring out Ryan Richter, the punter out of California, to punt it away. Because, Pat, they were thrown to a mismatch of Felton, who's 6'4", against star cornerback safety over there, who's 5'8". So they were looking for the mismatch throw it high and think. Well, there's no doubt Carter. I mean, he he's shown us touch. He's his 23 touchdown passes back in 19. They were the most for a Spartans QB since the program went to Division 1. So, he does have the touch and the arm strength to get it down there. Fair catch made by Josh McGrigg. And now okay, I'll 
ask you to put the head coach Chris Valerio's hat on. You you try to take a few shots and get in a field goal range, or even better to get in the end zone, or do you are you content with taking a three point lead into the intermission here at home? Let's see who he has his quarterback. He's got Jaron Russell. Russell. Coming up. I'd let him I'd let him do a boot rollout and see if he can pick somebody downfield. If not, he could run. Minute to play, 10-7 flash. Second straight home game for SFU. After almost two years with the pandemic of no football. The Shields football across the 20. Out to the 21. We ran a screen pass there, Pat. Chris Myers, defensive lineman out of Tennessee. Played at Middle Tennessee. Brought Marcus down. His older brother, Robert, drafted by the Baltimore Ravens in 2015 and played with a number of NFL teams. There's a little shuffle pass to Marcus. Marcus is upended. That was Tyler Long, the Lackawanna product. Myers' brother, Robert, played with the Ravens who drafted him, as well as the Colts, Broncos, and Seahawks. He, being Myers, was uh, the MEAC defensive player of the week after his pair of sacks against Elizabeth City. First and 10 from the 29. Jiren flushed. Rolls, fires, and it's caught along the Norfolk State sideline, bringing it in with Katero, and it's a first down for SFU. Nice play, get Katero downfield. Get in position to get a field goal, and it's not a touchdown, Pat. And what do we got in the clock? We got... Just 19.2, but, Jay, you're looking at maybe 20 yards to try to at least give Schmoke a shot. And we have, two, we have a timeout, I think, left, Pat. Three receivers on the flash side of the field. And Marcus and Jiren in the backfield. And flags fly. It's a false start Stay with us at the break. We'll take a break, and then Jay and I will be back. We'll look at the first half statistics. Also run down some of the other goings on in SFU athletics, and then the director of athletics here at the university, James Downer, in his second year, we'll talk to him about making creating the opportunity to flash to play an FBS game as well as other fall sports matters here. At SFU, that's coming up at the break. So they step off the five on the false start penalty. It's a first and 15 from the 37. Jiren, fire. The shield to catch. Inside of Norfolk State Territory, first down yardage as he's brought down at the 40. Chunk plays for DeShields here this afternoon. Bringing him down for Norfolk State, that was Marcus Hall, but not before Marcus DeShields. Another big play on that screen pass. It has worked well. Jiren finding DeShields in space and Marcus squaring the shoulders and getting upfield. Marcus has speed, power, and I tell you what, yards after catch. He has really been shown some great, great ability here, Pat, for us, which we needed over the years. So the Flash do call a timeout. Fans. We got 11.5 on the clock. You have enough time, Jay, to take a shot? Probably going to need to be a sideline route. You're out of timeouts. Sideline route. Incomplete pass. Either one. Well, it checked that. 
Do we have a timeout? Pat? Yeah, I'm looking. Uh, we definitely don't have three. That's what they have on the board. I'm trying to think if this was our second or if this was our final. On the board, fans, the stadium scoreboard, they have three timeouts. Underneath the home, home team, and that is not correct. No. Is it one or is it two is our question. Georgia leads Vanderbilt 35 to nothing. The Nittany Lions on top of Villanova over in Happy Valley. 17-3 with four minutes remaining in the second half. Or I beg your pardon, in the first half. Listen, B, catch. They got to have a timeout. I mean, you would not have made that play there exactly. uh, as Russell finds Listen, B. And so... The Flash will use the timeout. Ball's at the 30. And we got 5.6 remaining. I'll tell you what, Jay, if the Flash could somehow come away with points here, that would be a real, uh, real uplifting after the offense has sputtered a handful of times here in the second quarter. Sputtered a little bit, threw in an extra quarterback with Justin there for a couple of, for a series that uh, kept them moving. Um, again, you know, we talked about what we have here at St. Francis with our team, talking about the challenge that Norfolk is going to give us because of their speed and their size. I mean, you can see their offensive line is huge. And their running backs run hard. And so – they have a good – and we know their skill players are really good. So, see, some adjustments are going to have to make, Pat. And, again, if you can come away with three points, that would be huge for us getting into the second half. Gives us that momentum, gives the kids a little bit of resilience. But I think the key adjustments we know will be made on both sides of the ball and with both, both teams. 5.6 to play, as I mentioned. 10-7 – Lead for the Flash. Both teams scoring on their first sets of downs. And they're going to kick right here. So Schmoke out of the hold. It will be. A 47-yard attempt. We got movement up front and the flags fly. So let's see if it was a fall start by the flash or if somebody jumped on that NSU front. And Bob Cannon, our referee, he has that arm going toward the green and white. So the flash are going to get five more and it'll be a little shorter field goal attempt for Shabok, the Richard Freshman out of Bellwood Annis High School. Now it will be a 42-yard attempt. Made good earlier from 45. Hold, snap. Bill goal! Missed it. Plenty of leg, but he pushed it left. And so the Flash and the Spartans will go to zeros on the board. A missed 42-yard attempt by Schmoke, who made a 45-yarder earlier in this game in the waning moments of the first quarter. We'll set our final or halftime score at 10. Seven. Hey, fans, again, we'll take a break. Jay and I will be back. We'll run down the statistics and some of the big plays from this first half. We'll talk to James Downer, the director of athletics at St. Francis, and we will also look at some of the fall sports. The volleyball team, a winner last night, men's and women's soccer with a doubleheader at the Stokes Soccerplex. 
tomorrow. That's all coming up at the intermission. You're watching Red Flash Football on Northeast Conference Front Row. It starts right when you hit the court. You imagine your finest moment. The game when he shot to get you to the dance. A monster dunk or no look pass and cutting down the net. Sports lets us dream of our own success. And prepare us for our finest moments on and off the court. Keith, can you please show DK how to do the Euro step? DK, that is not the way you do a Euro step. Coach, first step I take is Euro step. Five Star Mitsubishi Altoona offers the best warranty, the best price, best buying and ownership experience. That's right, we're the best of the best. In Incredible seven passenger Outlander, awesome Outlander Sport, fun to drive Lancer, or the sensible G4 Amarillo. New 2018 Mitsubishi's only $16,988. Uh huh. 
only $16,988. Five Star Mitsubishi Altoona, the best of the best, only at Five Star Mitsubishi Altoona. It doesn't get better than this. Our customers um, often come to us and say, I'm having this event. Give me some ideas. We've done everything from logo wear to really nice jackets to promotional items for member giveaway. I like that it's very hassle free. It is very streamlined. It's easy. And the Damon team have never let me down. When a student comes to St. Francis University, they come with gifts and talents that are unique to them. It's our role to help those students become the person that they are meant to be. Welcome back to Loretto 10-7 at the Intermission SFU and Norfolk State. The flash in that first half piled up the yardage, 290 yards on 32 plays, 158 for Norfolk State. So flash outgaining Norfolk State by a wide margin. Despite just the three-point advantage on the scoreboard, Jiren Russell, he is dialed in. Nine of 13 for 145 yards, one touchdown. He was sacked, and Slawoski we saw in that second quarter. He's two for two for 49 yards. That big pass play to Hunter Brown, uh, accounting for most of those 49 passing yards for Slawoski. to Shields, he's been dynamite. He's already over 100 yards receiving. He's caught a number of screen passes from Russell. Five catches for 102 yards for for Marcus. And how about the yards after catch, Jay? 79. Uh, a guy that just really can pick up the yards, the yak yards as they call them. And to show 66 yards on a half dozen carries, averaging 11 yards each time he has carried the football. Lavelle has 24 yards on five carries. Damon Horton, three carries for eight yards in that first half. Flash, 96 yards on the ground, 194 through the air. After DeShields, five catches. Listenby has four. For 23, Katero has three for 30, including that touchdown, that fantastic touchdown grab on that touch pass by Russell. And Hunter Brown has those two catches for 39 yards. Juan Carter, driving Russell's counterpart for the Spartans in that first half. He's 7 of 15. For 46 yards, Justin Smith has been his favorite target. He has four catches for just nine yards. So they've done a good job of holding that talented receiver in check. The Richmond, Virginia product. Again, four catches, but only nine yards on those catches. J.J. Davis, he has a catch for 23. And Ellington, one for four. Cameron Brent leads the way on the ground for the Spartans. 36 yards on seven carries. And Raekwon Smith, 27 yards on six. Rushing yards to passing yards. It's been more uh, really flipping the script for Norfolk State from St. Francis, who was very, very 
pass heavy. 112 yards for Norfolk State on the ground, just 46 through the air. Third down conversions, both teams struggling. Moving the sticks on third downs. Flasher one of five, and the Spartans are one of eight. Penalties, three for 15 yards for SFU, so they did a pretty good job in that regard. Seven for 43, and the lead, you feel like it should be bigger. You have DeShields fumble inside the five, trying to pick up yardage after the initial hit, and then the missed field goal chance for Schmoke at the end of that first half, and you, you feel a lot better. Better as a Flash fan if you had cashed in on a couple of those opportunities. Yeah, there were missed opportunities, Pat. I think we got to go back to the first series when we first had the ball, how we mixed it up at the run and pass. We seem to have gotten a little bit out of that rhythm. Um, but, again, we have taken North Polk out of their rhythm. Their rhythm has always been the run, more st than the pass so they're a balanced team but we summer uh could you talk to us a little bit about what had to happen i know there's a scholarship number uh that is a a factor in 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 making that happen but that was a that was a landmark uh for this program moving forward uh what happened behind the scenes that fans might be curious about yeah, sure, Pat. Um, you know, football scheduling is something a, a lot of people don't realize. You're you're typically looking about five to six years um, in advance in terms of where you're um, trying to set up some games and, and um, you know, make some connections that way and everything. So, you know, to be honest with you, I mean, this the Eastern Michigan game was something I didn't really have a part in, uh, you know, putting on the schedule, but... Um, you know, the, the FBS teams, the, um, uh, the Power Fives and, and people like Eastern Michigan, for example, you would have um, the opportunity for us to play those games if um, a program will act. Average uh, 56.7 scholarships over a two-year period, and they can use that game towards uh, bowl eligibility. And um, so it's something that's been done for years and years. And, and here at St. Francis, um, you know, that was a, a prohibition that the uh, the NEC had put out beforehand that uh, uh, the scholarships wouldn't allow allow us um, to, to play those games, and that, that rule has changed now. So you, you're starting to see St. Francis. You're starting to see other teams in our conference well, that CCSU's are playing those games. Well, Miami today. Exactly, exactly. So um, they're great opportunities. You know, that's something I'm very familiar with, uh, being at Presbyterian, Eastern Kentucky. Um, we play those games routinely, um, and something that we're going to be doing and here um, as we move forward, it's um, over the next uh, several years. It's going to be kind of a, a tour of the uh, the MAC uh, through about 2026. We at least have uh, one uh, MAC opponent on the schedule moving forward. Second half underway. JJ Davis takes the kickoff from Schmo, carries it out to the 31 yard line. That's where Norfolk State will have it. They trail 10 to 7. We're talking to Director of Athletics James Downer uh, about scheduling. Uh, uh, and the football team, of course, taking on Eastern Michigan, the first FBS program in school history. Was that per uh, was is that just happen? Was it purposeful to uh, turn to the Mac uh, at least in the short term? Or, or why are we facing teams? Uh, why will we be facing teams with frequency from that league? Yeah, it, it has a lot to do with geography. It has a lot to do with the fact that we, you know, we're trying to make the most out of those games in the terms of the the, the guarantee money that we the get. You, right, you don't want to um, be flying all over the country and, and adding those expenses. So the MAC makes a lot of sense. Um, they're bus trips for us, and, and a lot of times those schools, uh, you know, have a history. 
happy, um, you know, understanding who we are and, and, and oftentimes, um, you know, they're very receptive to that. And that comes down, down to some contacts that, you know, some people I know in those schools too. And that's a lot of times half the battle is just being able to uh, know someone to reach out to and uh, uh, try to, you know, create some dialogue and, and get a deal done. Lex Henry on the carry, a second down carry, has first down yardage out across the 45. He's a redshirt freshman out of Virginia Beach. So Norfolk State often moving here in this second half. About a minute in to the third quarter, 10-7 in favor of the flash. Carter to, to the far side. That's the Norfolk State side, and he's going to put it into the belly of the tailback Davis, and he'll carry for a couple of yards out to the 47. And, of course, Duquesne, a big win over a MAC program. So that helps the profile of the Northeast Conference. And let me ask you, are you rooting for other NEC schools outside of league? Does that uh, does that make a difference in terms of helping everybody in the NEC? I, you know, I think you always want to see – you know, a school like Duquesne do, you do well and you want to see the FCS to, you know, they come into these games a lot of times with chips on their shoulders and, and want to do well. Um, at the same time, a little, a little bit too much success makes our job a little bit harder in, <laughs> right. in that sense. Right, of, right. So uh, you're saying. You know, if you want to take They a, don't take the calls if you it, win too many games. Right. If you want to, <laughs> you know, look at our uh, example. from uh, Pitt basketball last year. You know, it's probably going to be a, 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 a fairly long time before we uh, uh, play the Panthers again in men's basketball. Before so Heather Lake takes your call. It, exactly. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, I mean, it, it's great to see, you know, those teams win those games on occasion and everything. I, I think for us in, in, you know, going out to Eastern Michigan, first opportunity for us to do that, I thought we played uh, very well. I think we demonstrated... Um, that we could be on the same field as a, an FBS, you know, level institution. And a lot of people don't understand that, you know, that's that's 85 full scholarships against, you know, 45. I mean, that's where we're at right now. And even, you know, even when we went out to Delaware the following week, uh, you know, that's a 63 um, scholarship type program to, again. So we, we've showed um, very well, I, I think, so far. And, and um, I know those games um, sometimes can get ugly and everything, but I, you know, I was very, very pleased with our efforts uh, the first two weeks. Henry had it on the last carry. Sebastian Benjamin takes him down. This time Carter keeps it on second down and gets close to the stick, just a yard shy inside the ball inside the 30. You need to get to the about the 28. It's shy of that, so bring up a third. And less than a yard coming up for Norfolk State. We're talking with James Downer here in this second home game on the flash schedule. Hit the road before a home date with Long Island University in a couple of weeks. There's a good hole over the right side for Henry. And the right shirt freshman does have a first down at least for Now, there was a flag thrown on the carry. Got a hold against Norfolk State, according to our referee, Bob Cannon. And it's interesting, and you watch football and the economics of it. We play Eastern Michigan. They then go to Wisconsin. Uh, so they get their... Uh, their money game, and, and I think you know it's a part of the, uh, it's a part of college athletics that people need to understand. Is that these things programs need funded, and um, it's it's a reality, and it becomes even more magnified with some of the rule changes. I think that the, the economics you have in a pandemic, uh, obviously, uh, you look at uh, data. Uh, with regards to NCAA and revenue generated, it's a reality that, that uh, 
program. There's a big run by Carter. Boy, he showed off that speed that Jay and I talked about in the first half. Gets all the way down near the 10-yard line. But the economics are a big part of your job uh, at a school competing at the level that we compete at here at St. Francis. Yeah, it really is, Pat. And I think the thing that you want to be cognizant of is that you just don't want to completely sell out your program too. Right. Um, you know, I think these games have a purpose. I think they're, um, it, they're exciting for our kids to be a part of and, and to play in a, uh, you know, a larger stage than what they're used to. And, um, we certainly want to give those opportunities, but at the same time, we just don't want to, uh, <laughs> You know, put ourselves in a, in in positions that are going to be more detrimental than than helpful and everything. And you know, I you know, there's a lot of uncertainty too um, out there as well now with you know what we've seen along the li landscape in terms of realignment and and uh, you know Texas and Oklahoma what they've done over the summer and um, you know I, I think we are going to get to a, a period of time where. Um, those larger schools, those biggest schools um, in college football, and they, they might get to the point where they just are playing against each other, and, and there's going to be a trickle-down effect um, along those lines with us. And, you know, I hope, I hope I'm retired by that point, to, to, to be <laughs> honest. Too. With you, um, I hope but, it's a long time yeah, down the yes, road. Yes, exactly. But um, because it, you think about it, that would that would really take away the 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 magic of a March Madness. It, it, well, well, you know, basketball is kind of a, a different thing. I, I'm I'm kind of talking football specific. With football okay. specific basketball. I think I I really don't think you're going to find that sort of um, um, atmosphere that you know is kind of created. But football, I think there is that that potential there. And, um, you know, like I said, Carter's going to keep it. Excuse me, James. Yeah. And after a carry by Brent, uh, and he will walk into the end zone over the left side for the touchdown. There's a flag that comes in after the play. Uh, the touchdown will stand. Carter showed off his foot speed earlier this drive, and then good blocking up front paves the way and puts Norfolk State ahead on the scoreboard they'll sort out the flag uh but yeah it's it's another one of those unsettling times uh within the nc2a mm -hmm. we had one a number of years ago uh when we saw the conference realignment it seems like uh you know with the announcement that you alluded to with texas uh and uh in oklahoma announcing that they're leaving uh we'll have to see what happens over the next several months there will be a period of certainly uncertainty for sure and i you know and as you said we've we've kind of went through this before and and you know at that time i think there was you know i don't want to say a groundswell but there was enough people at the power five schools that kind of said you know we're all in this together and we want to you know we don't want these types of games to go away because we know of the economics of how it helps the smaller schools along those lines and everything. But, you know, I think what changed, Pat, is, is you know, how we've gone through a pandemic and we've gone through some, you know, serious, you know, economic ramifications that came from the pandemic. And I think people are, you know, more on those mindsets of, of survival for their, you know, first and foremost for themselves as opposed to the association. And, um, but, you know, I don't want to be all doom and gloom. We're not there yet. And, and, and um, you know, like I said, you know, we we have a, 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 you know, a nice schedule, you know, coming up forward where, you know, those games are under contract. And we certainly intend to play those, those games and, um, you know, for the near future. And, and again, it, it gives those guys something to look forward to. And it gives them, um, you know, that, that chance to, you know, test themselves against uh, you know against those programs that um, you know have some some advantages over us for certain. <laughs> Nardone puts the point after through 14-10 in favor of Norfolk State talking to director of athletics James Donner here at St. Francis. How's your family? They getting acclimated? Yeah, they're they 
and the, settled yeah, into every, Western Pennsylvania? Yeah, you know, it's we're coming up on a, you know, I've been here since July of 20, and uh, they moved up here in November. And, November, uh, okay. Yeah, so we're, they're coming up on a year, but, uh, you know, same thing. I mean, the, the um, area's been great to us. It's been um, been able to get our, you know, kids involved in some uh, sports and you know obviously school and everything. how old are your boys now uh they're six and four okay six and four so um what, first grade for the six first year old? yeah first grade and you know kind of super for preschool for the other <laughs> one but um you know I, I think for us you know even you know being the you know weirdness of last year you know the, my family never had a chance come up and uh, really kind of experience what home games look like and and you know just being on campus and so you know this being here now you know two weeks in a row my, you know families here at football games and you know my wife's desperately trying to keep them um, occupied and and, and interested <laughs> and everything but uh, probably a losing battle yeah, exactly. But, you know, the same things, you know, the, the campus is great um, in the sense of, you know, my boys, you know, went through Rob, Rob Crimmel's basketball camp this summer and uh, did science camp up here, uh, you know, from the academic side. So, you know, just having those opportunities are, you know, that's what's special about working on a college campus. And, um, you know, it's been a You know, it's been a great home for us uh, since we've been here. So the penalty fans uh, on the uh, after the touchdown uh, by Carter was was on the flash personal foul call. Uh, so they kicked off from the fifty, as you saw on the stream. Tate Myers, one of the up men, took it, and now the flash had the ball back. Jiren survey. It wants to go long. Has a man downfield. He overshoots him. Listen, be coverage was good. Flags fly. Maybe Listenby was bumped. He, he was being covered downfield by R.J. Coles, the redshirt sophomore out of Richmond. And let's see what the call is going to be. Well, James, we wish you all the best. It's Hopefully we'll continue to return to some semblance of normalcy, both as a university uh, at large and uh, within our our athletics program, and uh, it's uh, uh, we're thankful that you found your way uh, to Loretto, and uh, and boy, it's nice to to be able to come to games, uh, to have the fans here last week, as you mentioned, your wife and your boys are here, and just to see people here. We were both involved with basketball season when the refs could hear what I was saying, and everybody could hear what was saying and that's just not what college athletics was intended to be no it really wasn't i mean last year's you know basketball felt like uh, a bunch of close scrimmages which you, you know you're familiar with pat and that's you know and it just missing the atmosphere and 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 having the fans is is just a a, a true game changer and it's uh, as you said it's just uh, it's phenomenal to be back in that setting yeah Thanks for making the time. Absolutely. Pat. It's great My to pleasure. see you. Of course. Yeah, good course. luck keeping the boys occupied. Yeah, no doubt. You better check in and maybe take a shift. <laughs> yeah, I might have to. <laughs> right. Thanks, James. All right, thank you. That was James Donner, our second-year director of athletics here at St. Francis University. And, again, talked about some of the... Uh, some of the factors that go into putting a football schedule together. That ball was tipped at the line. Ball's incomplete. He was looking for a listen B. And it will bring up a third and long for St. Francis. And, Jay, you know, uh, just to follow up on what James said, there is a balance that needs to be struck. You see some of these schools out there that they're looking for the paydays and they'll play two SEC schools and an ACC school. Uh, but there's a there's a balance, I think, that, yes, the economics of it and the, the, the pulling your weight that a football program needs to do at this level, but also giving your chance, your team a chance to be competitive and enjoy success. And, uh, you know, I look at our schedule, and I think that we're towing that line pretty well. Oh. I agree, Pat. I agree 100%. And James is very astute of that. 
and he has brought that with him with his experience in the D1 programs that he's been at. And I think that's huge for our, our program. I just didn't understand that position, that play we just had, Pat. Uh, Gyron it was uh, had to leave the pocket and run, and he went down a yard short of getting a first down. Now it's fourth and one, and he could have just gone the extra yard. I mean, well, they're going to go for it. Norfolk came out the second half and just right down the field and scored, Pat. It's a long one. Ball's at the 47. They need to get well, shy of the 47. They need to get two. 48. Katero in motion. Gyron rolls left. Fires. Has a man. Listen to me. Flags. There. there should be a flag on that one. No flag. Boy, I thought there was some face scarding going on over there. No flag comes out and the flash will turn it over on downs and give a short field to the Spartans. The coverage over there on the Norfolk State sideline was Coles, Devin Coles, a redshirt sophomore. He never really tracked the ball, uh, but the flag stays in the official's pocket. The flash give it away on downs. And I'll tell you what, Pat, Norfolk is running the way they we heard they're going to run within the tackles or right outside the tackles. They took that ball off the kickoff, drove down the field, running on run plays. That's what they're doing. They're, they're staying. And that line is disciplined. Their line is big and it's very disciplined. And those backs know to get in off that off the, off the tackles. And that's where they're picking up their yards. So they got the lead on the Carter touchdown. And run now they have the football back in flash territory. Kevin Johnson on the end around. He has knocked out of bounds over here along the flash sideline. That was Kelvin Beatty, the inside linebacker. Came in with seven stops. And the New Jersey native runs the ball carrier out of bounds. Yeah, I'm with you, Jay. I thought that Jiren could have just surged ahead and got that, uh, but went down to avoid... The contact uh, before he had successfully moved the sticks. Hopefully, hopefully that won't bite the flash here. Two yards on that carry. Keep it on the ground. These running backs get in behind those big, big tackles and guards, Pat, and they just keep chopping their feet and keep moving. And that's what they keep pushing that, pushing our defensive line. Our line's going to have to start to take over in this in this battle right now. Johnson joined the team has got the carry there. Joined the team as a walk on before the 2019 season out of, of Suffolk, Virginia. Played for Nansamon River, the Warriors. Played cornerback and running back there. He's a third and five for his team. Sticks are at the 37. Carter carries. Gets close to the sticks, but does not get there. He was met initially by Greg Reddick. Richard Freshman out of Miami. And it's just going to be less than a yard shy, but he is short. They're going to put it down to the 38. Carter's starting to tuck it more and run now, Pat. You notice he's starting to take over the game for offense for their side. Yeah, well, they struggled uh, moving the ball through the air in that first half and going with what has been successful. All right, big play here. Fourth and less than a yard for Norfolk. Flash just went for it on fourth down and did not convert. Norfolk State will. End around, right side, Davis. Plenty of running room down inside the red zone. He's finally pushed out of bounds. But not before he moves the sticks. Knocked out by Sanders, but a big chunk of yardage there. And Norfolk State just scored in their last set of downs, and they're knocking on the door again. And, Pat, they keep running to the outside and getting to the outside. They shouldn't – they got to – Seal off that outside, have them come back into 
traffic so that they can be caught or trapped. But they're just their speed is just taking them to the right side routes. Midway through this third quarter, 14. 10 in favor of Norfolk State. Handoff between the tackles. Maybe a yard. Give them, give them one. It'll be second and nine. Didn't help in the last series. We did have a roughing the passer call too, Pat. That was Norfolk. costly. Yep, yeah. costly. And then the personal foul after the touchdown as well. Yes. You know, a little bit sloppy. Flash did a good job. Just three penalties. In the first half, uh, but some big chunks of yardage given up, up on penalties here in the first half of this third quarter. The flash led most of the way, 10-7, but Norfolk State with the go-ahead touchdown. The run by Carter on that last series, and he's going to keep it here on the ground. Has the football down inside the five, still on his feet. Finally brought down. Down by Mika Magale, the outside linebacker from Lakewood, Washington, transferred to SFU from Utah State, but it's another first down. Not a first and goal for Norfolk State. And Jay, they're not, they're pretty one dimensional right now. They're not throwing the football, uh, and yet they're still able to find holes in the running game. And are, we're missing a lot of tackles, Pat. Our tackling is sloppy. So first and goal, spotted at the seven. Carter wants to throw. Corner finds his man. Is he in? He caught it. Did he keep the feet in? He did. Hooks up with Justin Smith on a touch play. Similar to the hookup Russell had with Katero Summers. He put it up. Got some air underneath it. Smith tracked it, pulled it in, touchdown. And it's a two-score lead for the visiting Spartans. Well, we were just talking about them going to predominantly the run game and Carter finds his very talented receiver out of Richmond, Virginia on the catch. Preseason all MEAC. That kick is up and good. Smith this was preseason all MEAC. Second in the MEAC coming into today's game in receiving yards and third in catches. And he had a good game against Toledo. Three catches, 51 yards, including that 47-yard grab. He had five catches for 66 yards against Wake. And, Jay, you got to tip your hat. That was a good th throw. Just like we talked about Jiren, a good throw. Good job by Katara to find it. Same is true there for Carter and Smith on that touchdown. A great play, Pat. you got to give them all the credit. They've, they took that ball, drove down the field, basically on the run. They didn't throw that ball to that touchdown, Pat, and it's been on, it's either been drawn Carter or or his other running backs have helped carry him through this, Pat. Didn't take long, three minutes, 23 seconds. Seven-yard pass from Smith to Carter. And it's a 14, or beg your pardon, it's an 11-point lead for Norfolk State. Carter now 8 for 16 for 53 yards and a touchdown. All right. Flash need to right the ship here. They get the football back. It's a short kick. They stay away from a Greg. Fair caught at the 38-yard line for the flash, Keyshawn Dyson makes the catch. So good field position. I'll tell you what, Jay, you might want to keep it away from a grig, but you give up a lot of yardage by just pooch kicking that. Really, really good field position for the flash to start this drive. Yeah, you know, Pat, I'm looking at the halftime statistics. And at the end of the second, first, at the end of the first half, Carter 
had no runs on the ball. Second, just in the third quarter, he had eight carries for 62 yards. Two to the left, two to the right for Jaron Russell. DeShields gets the carry and maybe a yard. Stacked up almost immediately. Middle of that Norfolk state line. Anthony Bloom was there. And actually going to lose a yard. The Shields is. They're going to spot it at the 36. So it's a loss of one. And a second and long for SFU. They go no, no huddle. Sputtering a little bit right now, Jay, offensively. Shields has his number called again. Hurdles one would-be tackler and brought down across the 47-yard line. Taken down by Chris Myers. He's done that a couple of times this season. Look to hurdle defenders. He got hurt on that one, Pat. He's having a great game. Hopefully he's okay. He's laying over here on this flash sideline. I'll tell you what, it's dangerous, Jay, because you really, you leave yourself vulnerable when you leave your feet like that. It's a splash play and a dynamic play, but one that he really uh, allow the defense to take their shots in many instances. Lavelle comes in. He has the football and a first down. He did a good job turning around. That ball was a little underthrown by Jiren, but Armstead able to collect himself, go down and get that football, secure the football, and then turn it up. Yeah, it was a nice play. Jiren had a nice touch on that ball, Pat. It wasn't too hard. He doesn't have to throw it hard in the flats. He just has to get it there. First attempt from the 48 of Norfolk State. So the flash after the short kickoff and the pass to Lavelle Armstead, they are in business in NSU territory. Jaron checks down to Armstead again. Armstead has moved around a little bit during his studies. He played his freshman, sophomore, and junior years at Chancellor High School down near Fred. Ricksburg, Virginia. And then he transferred to Stafford High School as a senior in 2017. Had a great season at Stafford. 1,700 yards and 25 touchdowns. Uh, and actually, Stafford uh, advanced to the state semifinals and then uh, did a postgrad year in Wheaton, Maryland at the Avalon School uh, before matriculating to St. Francis. Got a penalty against the flash. Too many of these, Jay, here in the second half. Too many errors, Pat. Too many mental mistakes. And we talked with Scotty uh, Lewis about that from his standpoint and how many mistakes were made last week and the number of errors they made. But when you get a game like Norfolk, who's disciplined, you start making those errors, they're going to take advantage of it. And they have. Uh, turned a 10-7 deficit into... A 21 to 10 lead. Run down the other scores around the Northeast Conference for you here in just a moment. Second and 13 after the penalty yards mark. Yardage is marked off. Jiren's going to keep it. Tackled by Remy Feltz, redshirt junior out of Germany. A couple of years at New Mexico Military Academy before transferring to Norfolk State. Only played two years of high school football, did Feltz. Third and ten. See the flash. You can move the sticks here. Try to give the offense a chance to get some of those points back that Norfolk State has put on the board here in the third quarter. What was a 
10-7 halftime lead is now a 21-10 deficit for SFU. Over the middle, and it's intercepted at the 35-yard line. Stuart Anderson, the defensive back, read the eyes of Jiren Russell, stepped in front, and took it away. And so the big plays continue to go in favor of the visitors as Anderson, he was lying in wait. And he picks off Russell to get it back for NSU. Bat in his third quarter is down to two minutes. That's how fast it's gone. Anderson. His father, Stuart Anderson Sr., played college football at UVA and professionally with the Washington football club. And, boy, his son just made a big play, a, a splash play for the defense as they get the ball back. And SFU's offense... just really trying to dial up something that will work here. They've struggled here in the second half. Fake the handoff. Wanting to go long is Carter. Double coverage downfield, and Justin Smith can't get underneath it. The ball falls incomplete. Bat, that's the first pass they've thrown that far downfield today. They have not, and everything else has been short, under coverage, and uh, out in the flats. But mostly, they run the ball, Pat. They've been running very disciplined between the tackles. Well, and, and let's give this offensive line credit, Jay. Uh, this Norfolk State offensive line has created some lanes for Cameron Brent, J.J. Davis, when Jawan Carter has handled the football. Uh, they've done a nice job. Yes, they have, Pat. There was a, a really good story in the Virginia Pilot uh, by Ray Nimmo uh, on Thursday. Uh, on one of those linemen, Jalen Powell, he's a redshirt senior out of Temple Hills, Maryland. And uh, a great story about uh, Powell and how he matriculated to Norfolk State. He played along the O-line from third grade to his freshman year of high school, played the center position. When he came to Norfolk, uh, started at center, but then moved to left guard and has really found a home there. Was the MEAC Offensive Lineman of the Week after the Wake Forest game and credits his dad, uh, Cedric Powell, uh, for mentoring him in football. Uh, of course, his father, very successful, won a state title in the 1980s with Hampton High School before playing at Glenville State and Norfolk State. Like and in, interestingly, uh, the offensive line coach, uh, Brandon Torrey, at Norfolk State, he used to play for the Steelers fans. He recruited Powell while he was coaching at Howard. A coaching staff change at Howard allowed Norfolk State to get in the game in terms of recruiting Pow And Jalen, who uh, didn't want to go where his mom and dad went to school, ended up enrolling at Norfolk State and, and, and loves it there. And he's he and, his, he and his line mates have really done a nice job in this second half, allowing some lanes to form for, for Carter and the running backs. Pat, they're just gashing us between the tackles, as we talked about, or outside the tackle. They're happy to run that ball because that's what they're, they're controlling the clock and they're controlling the yardage in the field. Then they're taking their time, and that's, that's what they've been disciplined to do. And like they said, when they get into something they like, they keep running it. And I got the lead, and they've been eating that clock up, as you mentioned, moving right along. There's another one thrown downfield. This time, the intended receiver was Daquan Felton. It falls incomplete. And you're right, Jay. I mean, I can't recall. Again, we haven't called a game in a 
while, but I can't remember a game where it's moved along this cl- quickly. We're already inside of two minutes to play in the third quarter. Yeah. Promise to those scores fans. At two o'clock. We're a minute forty six to go. If you go back one. to Juan Carter and his big run play, it was third and long, and he took off. It was third and twelve. Now it's second and ten. Handoff again. Running room. We talked about the O line. That time they blew up a hole for Brent, and he carries it for eight yards. Temple leads Wagner fans with nine fifty four to go in the third. Twenty to seven in favor. Of the Owls out in Philadelphia. Hurricanes and the Blue Devils. Miami leads CCSU 49 to nothing with a minute 26 to go in the second. Duquesne all over Virginia Lynchburg. 31 to nothing with nine minutes remaining in the second quarter. That handoff goes between the tackles. They've made hay there. Why not continue Cameron Brent on the carry there? So Duquesne after their big win over a F. CS team, or FBS team, I beg your pardon, uh, rolling over Virginia Lynchburg and Dartmouth in a battle of Ivy and NEC schools. Dartmouth leads Sacred Heart. Still in the first quarter, two minutes to play, six to nothing. Here it's 21 to 10, Norfolk State with the Spartans driving again. And another flash player down. Now he's up, he appears to be okay. That was Donnell Brown. Boy, he has played well this season, but gets up and appears to be okay. Pat, they're just chipping away three to five yards every run play. And that Virginia Lynchburg team fans, we've mentioned them earlier in the broadcast, uh, Norfolk State will play them on October 16th. So common opponent with Duquesne. Duquesne rolling over Virginia Lynchburg. 31 nothing Outside, Pat. Derwin. Outside, Johnson, and he has another first down. Was The script has flipped, Jay. Uh, we score, and then we are knocking on the door again. The offense has really uh, sputtered, uh, and the defense in the second half has been unable to slow down the run- running attack of Norfolk State. Three in the books. Flash trying to right the ship. They're down 11 as we head to the fourth quarter. 21-10. Back with fourth quarter action. You're watching Red Flash Football on Northeast Conference front row. Our customers um, often come to us and say, I'm having this event. Give me some ideas. We've done everything from logo wear to really nice jackets to promotional items for or member giveaway. I like that it's very hassle-free. It is very streamlined, it's easy. And the Damon team have never let me down. It starts right when you hit the court. You imagine your finest moment. The game-winning shot that gets you to the dance. A monster dunk or no-look pass. And cutting down the net. Sports lets us dream of our own success. And prepare us for our finest moments on and off the court. Welcome back to Loretto, Pennsylvania. Pat Farbaugh and Jay Roberts with you as we head to the fourth quarter, 21 to 10 in favor of Norfolk State. And we made adjustments, Jay, last week heading into that second half against Wagner. Uh, We need to do more of the same here. Uh, They are moving the football on the ground, mixing in a little bit of passing, not a lot. They did score the touchdown. Uh, Beautiful pass from Carter to Smith. Uh, for the last points of the game, uh, but moving the ground and, and really the flash struggling to s- sustain anything offensively. Defense has been on the field a long time. Defense has become really porous, Pat. It's just like we're, we're not been able to stop them. I mean, in the first half, Pat, they only had 112 yards rushing. Right now they have 
252 yards rushing, Pat. They over doubled their rushing yardage. Their passing hasn't been much better. They don't need to pass. They've been gouging us with the run. And they've been on, Pat, they're, right now they're three of three for fourth down conversions. Looking to throw here. No, he's going to keep it. Carter chased down by Watkins. He gets down to the 15. Give him four. It'll be a second and six. Flash make changes defensively, trying to bring in fresh legs, keep that defense fresh. They've been on the field a long time. Total yards, 319 for the Flash. NSU closing the gap, 305 now on 62 plays. Okay, they have ran 20, well, even more than that now. Uh, going into the fourth quarter, they had ran 20 more plays than St. Francis. That doesn't bode well in terms of keeping your defense fresh. Exactly, and that doesn't bode well for keeping your offense on the field to, to and what and exactly what uh, Norfolk's doing. Yeah, this would be a dagger if they get a touchdown here. Third and one. Handoff. Tackled in the backfield. Taken down. That's Jake Heupel. He measured Kevin Johnson, took him down, and it's a fourth down, and they will force a field goal attempt. Oh, my. They needed that play there, and Heupel, the graduate student from Somerset, was up for the challenge. So it will be a field goal attempt coming up, up for Josh Nardone. He's made good on all of his point afters here this afternoon. This will be a 28-yard field goal attempt. Out of the hold of Stuart Anderson. Blocked. It's blocked. The Flash have the football. Brought down at the 15, but they blocked the field goal attempt by Nardone and the defense after struggling. Playing and slowing down the running game. Hypo makes a big play. And sometimes, Jay, it can be a snowball effect. They're able to get the big special teams play there. Flag on the play, we do Pat. have a flag. I think it came in after the came block. after the block, though. So it's probably going to be of the personal foul variety. Let's see which team it will be. We'll be stepping off the yardage for. Boy, they needed that play. A lot of time left. Plenty of time. The Flash down 11. They're down two scores, but less than two minutes into the fourth quarter. Against Norfolk. Pat. Yeah, it's a sideline interference penalty. Well, they warned those guys. Uh, yeah. The officials are, are uh, for the most part, generally speaking, they'll give you uh, sufficient warning on making sure those guys stay back and outside of the lines. So the Flash will get 15 more yards. Well, I, I mean, Jay, this is your chance. You, you got a quarterback impact. You got to get down there and try to make something happen. So Slowoski comes in. Again, the pit transfer played at Hempfield High School from Greensburg. He was 5 for 10 for 88 yards at EMU. Came in in the first quarter. Finds Listenby. Listenby running room. First down yard. Yardage. Out across the 43 to the 44-yard line. And Flash going to go up-tempo here. Sticks move. Clock moves as well. Approaching the 13-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Flash down 11. Armstead, left side. Stiff arms a man. And... Stiff arms long, and long shoves him out of bounds, and that'll stop the clock. We have not seen Marcus DeShields back in. Of course, he tried to hurdle a defender and, and was injured on that play. It has been Armstead since. So I see Marcus standing down there on the sideline. Mm -hmm. Hopefully he's okay. Trainers tended to him after he came off the field, uh, but standing and not being looked at now. So hopefully that's a good sign. First attempt, for, or a bigger part, second and six for the flash. 
from their own 47. Armstead picking his way maybe a yard as he has stood up. Last guy to slow him down. That was Imani Bay, defensive lineman out of Washington, D.C., another one of the transfers on this Norfolk State roster. He's arrived at NSU from VMI. Give him a yard. Third and six. Sticks are at the Norfolk State 47. So a big play here for the Flash. Down 11. Inside of 12 minutes to play here in the fourth quarter. Slawoski flushed. Fires. Bounces it into the intended receiver. That was Josh McGray. Good, good pressure that time by the front for the Spartans, and that'll bring up fourth down. Yeah, that line was a sieve, Pat. They didn't block at all. I mean, they got to Justin really quick. He didn't have time to set up or even pick out a receiver to dump it off to. I want to remind fans, if you're listening and you're local, the women's volleyball team will be playing today at 5 p.m. They'll host Long Island University as Slaby comes out to punt it away. And the NEC Specialties Player of the Week gets some air underneath it. Fair catch is made at the 15-yard line by Justin Smith. Flash and LIU today at 5 p.m. over at the Stokes Center. Congratulations to head coach Sarah McMullen's team. They picked up a 3 to nothing win over St. Francis College to open up NEC action last night. That was the team's second straight win after a non-conference victory. Maddie Tyus had 11 kills. Maggie Hogan chipped in nine. And Kimmy Sweeney led the way in assists with 20. So good luck to Sarah's team as they take on the Sharks. And tomorrow, fans, if you can make it over, it's supposed to be a beautiful day. Double header action at the Stokes Soccer Plex. That pass over to the right side. That was DeKendall James, the Coastal Carolina transfer, bringing it in. Tomorrow, doubleheader action. The women's soccer team will take on Central Connecticut State at 11 a.m. And second game of the doubleheader, we'll have the men taking on Merrimack at 2. The men's team is on a roll. They defeated Robert Morris 1 to nothing on Wednesday here at home and have won four of their last five. So, Plenty of other Red Fly Sports teams in action here at home. If you can get over to Loretto, encourage you to do so. Hand off that time goes to J.J. Davis. And Davis able to push across. Jay, the defense has to be tired right now. Uh, they have just been on the field uh, much of the third quarter and here a uh, chunk of time in the in the fourth. And, Pat, they, they're they going back to what they've done, as we've heard from the coaches, that they see a play they like and they're going to run it and run it and run it. And that's what they're doing inside the, that's what they're doing inside the tackles and right off, right off the outside. There's a flag before the play developed. False start against Norfolk State. Moving up front was Jeff Woods, a redshirt freshman out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. I always feel bad when I mention those guys for the first time on a on a penalty. But Woods has played well. He, Powell, and the other linemen up front, Justin Red, really creating lanes and openings for the Norfolk State running game. So first and 15 after the penalty yard. Each catch is made by Justin Smith. I'll tell you what, Jay. Justin Smith has been as advertised. Marco Pecora uh, and Scotty Lewis were both talking about how talented he is. And Marco mentioned that he recruited a lot of these guys uh, in the right. recruiting process. Uh, both of them were raving about Smith, and with good reason. He has really played well here this afternoon. He's got good hands, good speed, keeps his eye. You know, Pat, he's, he's just a good receiver. And good enough for a first down there. First and 10 from the 41-yard line for Norfolk State. Valuable time ticking off that clock as we're now five minutes into this fourth quarter with the flash down 11 on the scoreboard. That carry 
for Norfolk State Davis, and they're content Jay, to let that play clock wind down. They're on the road. They have a two-score lead. You're inside of 10 minutes to play. Clock is, again, plenty of time for the flash, but it begins to become more of a factor here for SFU. They got to they got to stop them. Pat. And the, again, <clears throat> going back to that line, they're just churning away, just pushing this back and taking over. Well, they got some depth up there. I mentioned Red. He's 6'5", 315. He's our right guard. He started 12 games at 19, 25 career stars, including 20 in a row. Jalen Powell, who I was sharing the story, how he found his way to Norfolk State, 37 straight starts. Each game in his career. So they have some guys up there. Jeff Woods, he transferred from UConn, redshirted in 19. He transferred in spring of 2020, moved from the D-line to the O-line last year. He's played an important role. So they got some they got some depth up there. We talked about the talent in the, in the uh, at the scope positions in the trenches. Right. Uh, good players there as well. Another flag. Just got another offsides. False start. <clears throat> but again, you know, it doesn't seem to affect them. They just be able to bounce right back from those penalties and get those third down and turn them into first downs. Flash have struggled, struggled to find rhythm offensively after getting off to a great start. A turnover inside the five. After the touchdown to Katero Summers. And Flash have been unable to regain the rhythm that they enjoyed on those first two drives offensively. Carter fires. Good throw. Receiver is Marquis Ellington. And he's tackled just shy of the 50. Up there to make the stops. That was Giovon Sanders. Approaching the eight-minute mark. That'll bring up a fourth down. They're going to punt it, Pat. I, I, right decision. You're up two scores on the road. I, I would. Uh, this would be a no-brainer if I was Coach Odoms. Again, in his first year as the head coach here. At Norfolk State. When we talk about the long layoff, for these two teams, neither playing a spring season. That ball was partially deflected and picked up on the run. Grabbing the football was Greg Riddick and getting a piece of that football was Kai Williams. Kai Williams blocked it. The redshirt sophomore out of Johns Creek, Georgia, product of Mount Pisgah Christian, and then the return by Greg Riddick. So the Flash will have it in Norfolk State territory, but they got to make some hay down 11 with 743 remaining. Mentioned uh, both these teams not playing a spring 2020 season. Again, I, you're still shaking the rust off after yeah. such a long layoff, and we've seen that this afternoon by the Flash. It's going to be Sl Slowoski again. Seen both he and Russell this afternoon. Good pressure that time applied by the front for Norfolk State. Listen, be the intended receiver. Slawoski just had no time and rolls to his left and throws it out of bounds. There had to be some missed assignments on that blocking, Pat. Those, those two defensive linemen were in his face even before he turned around. So, you know, if you give him time and we watch the games that Eastern Michigan or, or Delaware, if you give Justin time, he will throw the ball. But you got to, and so will Jiron, but you got to give them time. Second and 10 after the incompletion. Fake to Armstead, fires over the middle. That's Katero, first down yardage. Katero down at the 32-yard line, brought down on the play by Deshaun Dixon, but another first down. They move the sticks. Flash needed that. That was a good throw. Katero comes off, leaning a little bit. Hopefully there's nothing serious there. He makes a 
to the sideline. Well, he was rolled up on an earlier play, Pat, and he got caught in the wash with a, one of our receivers, and so he came off earlier, was limping a little bit. Yeah, it looks like he's, well, like I can't really tell. I thought it was his hand for a second, just watch the way he's reacting now, but not sure. Try to keep tabs on that. Slawoski this time right side. That's listen, be running room inside he's the 25 in, 20. Does he get to the pylon? No signal yet. They're going to say he's out inside the one. Brandon Listenby trying to get inside that pylon. He turned on the jets down the right sideline. The flash are knocking on the door. Get him in space, Jay. And that was what they were able to do there. Finally, and the redshirt junior picks his way down inside the one. First and goal for the flash. Armstead, sidecar to Slowoski. Fade route. Corner, Katero. No flags. Pretty good throw by Slowoski, but the coverage was good. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, Josh McGregor was wide open, little number one. Right, <laughs> I know he's going for the play, but you know, yeah, it's the same sort of pass. Catero hauled in by Jiren Russell in the first quarter. This time, Slowoski looking for him over there. The shields is back, back in, Pat. Oh, that's a good, that's a good sign. Marcus back in after getting banged up on a play in the third. All right, here we go. Second and goal. Pitch to shield. Left side. Going to lose yardage. Going to be stacked up back at the four. And so it'll be a third and goal coming up for St. Francis. Good pursuit defensively by Norfolk State's Marquise Hall. The linebacker able to bring down the shields from behind. Well, this I, Jay, this four down territory. Territory, in my judgment. No, no doubt, Pat. With that down time, eleven, six minutes left. Down eleven. I wouldn't roll on a two-point conversion and a touchdown. I think you got to get seven. You get this close. Third and goal. The shields in the backfield. Slawoski wants to throw. Has time. Decides to keep it. He's going to be brought down. He gets back to the original line of scrimmage, but that's it. There to stuff him. For Norfolk State, that was Anthony Bloom, the redshirt freshman out of Edgewood, Maryland. And the Flash with 5.45 to play. They're going to keep the offense on the field. It's a fourth and goal from the two-yard line for SFU. Down 11, 21 to 10 here against Norfolk State. Working out of the pistol, Slawoski. He's the transfer from Pitt to Shields. The Lackawanna College product in the backfield with him. Rolls right. Looks. Fires. Listen, be touchdown. Brandon Listen, be hauls it in from Slawoski and the flash. Offense. They needed a spark. And Listen, be on that drive. They got him down. He got them down inside the one off of a reception. And he gets his reward with a touchdown. And SFU now. Within five, with the point after to come. Do you go? For, you're going for two, Pat. We are going to go for two. Makes sense. Down, down five. This would bring them within a field goal, and they're going to talk this thing over. Well, we will keep it here. It's a no-brainer, right? I know they got those little charts, but you're down down five, five twenty-one to play. This will get you within three. Get you within three. <clears throat> back of my mind is okay we do this we got to hold we've got to stop the momentum that norfolk has built with the running game i thought for a minute there slobowski might be able to get in the end zone on third down it yeah. looked like there was some room it closed quickly but give him credit he rolled to his right and listen be wide open wide over open. there on the right flat and he's able to put six on the board what do you do here, Jay, if you're setting up for this fourth down? Play action? Play action again. Play action, roll out. That way, when you roll out, you got time. You can see who's lining up, you know. So it's a play action, boot to the right. His strength, because that's who, don't throw cross body. 
you throw with your body. Try to get it out there, Pat. That's my Paul. Again, the first points for St. Francis since late in the first quarter. Boy, I beg your pardon, not even that light. Early, 9-19 remaining in the first quarter. And they do find the end zone here. Slawoski to listen me. And now they're going to go for two to try to climb within three. All right, here we go. It's an empty backfield for Slawoski. We got receivers, four of them, bunched up here over on the left side, including DeShields. He's over here. Slawoski, football, nothing doing. He was going to keep it. They tried to pull a fast one on Norfolk State. It looked like it was a straight run play for Slawoski. The defensive front stayed home, and they bring him down. I don't even know where to go. No, even, <laughs> there was no room for him to go. They had four receivers bunched up on the left side, as you saw, fans. Yep. And Slawoski looked like he was going to run right away. So it was like a formation trickery. You yeah. Know? We yeah. put it over here, spread that there. Again, Norfolk discipline team stayed home. So the flash, within five, they'll have to find the end zone and if they want to pull this thing out. 5.20 or two field goals. 5.21 to play. Disappointing not to get the two-point conversion, but nice to see the offense finally generate a little bit of rhythm, move the sticks, and uh, Slawoski has settled in a quarterback some over the course of the last few possessions. Yeah, they clicked on that, Pat. Um, <clears throat> Again, now it's up to hold, hold Norfolk State. You got to hold him. Kevin Johnson deep, awaiting the kick from Alex Schmoke. That's going to go over his head and through the back of the end zone. That drive for St. Francis. It was a two-yard pass. Slawoski to listen be seven plays, forty-seven yards, two minutes and nineteen seconds. Now we need a quick three and out. Jay, get that ball back. Yeah. And let the offense, while they still have that momentum. Get back out on the field. Again, we knew that was going to be a test. And in that meeting yesterday, Jay, the, uh, repeatedly, uh, Coach Lewis and Coach Pecora talked about the athleticism of the Spartans team. And uh, they, they were worried about the talented Justice Smith. They talked about the team in the trenches. And, you know, Norfolk State has been as they advertised. He talked about Carter and how he was he'll pull that ball down and run, how accurate he is on passing. Cameron Brent, the ball carrier there, give him two, maybe three yards out to the 19-yard line. Second and seven. Clock ticks inside of five minutes to play. It's a five-point lead for the Spartans. What we thought was going to be an game with a lot of offense it has turned out to be more of a struggle defensively for these two teams first ever matchup between sfu and nsu and they're going to milk that play clock for all it's worth it's going to be brent again he does get out across the 30 to about the 31 before he's Stacked up. St. Francis, first man to meet him, Willie O'Hara, the inside linebacker out of Des Moines, Iowa. Transfer from the University of South Dakota. Had eight stops a week ago against Wagner and sets up a third down here. Third and long from the 32-yard line. Long four short, short five for the Spartans. Fans, fans try to cheer on the defense, get a stop and get the ball back for SFU's offense. Clock inside of four, four minutes now to play. Anthony Williams in motion. Now he goes and settles. Play clock. Does it expire? No, they call, call the timeout just before it ticked to zero. So it's the first time out of the half for Norfolk State. We will keep it here as we have a big third Third and four coming up for Norfolk State with a flash down five. 
Fans, we want to mention uh, we haven't played football in a while here. We lost some of our alums uh, over the last year plus, and I'm sure we've lost others, but some of the players that uh, have been close to the program over the years. Kevin Grodsky, uh, just a wonderful man and involved on the academic side, has come back for uh, different mentorship events here on campus. He died earlier this year. Uh, also, we extend our condolences to Jerome Yetzko's family and, and Fred Mazzarella, uh, homegrown product, transferred, uh, went to Utah after he graduated from high school, and then came back to St. Francis. And, and Jay, I know that you know some of these guys well. And uh, we extend our condolences to the family members of Kevin, Jerome, and Fred. Yeah, I, I knew Mr. Yetzko was a great guy. He was a principal down at Portage. And superintendent was a great guy, good family man. And I played both with Kevin and, and uh, Fred. Uh, Fred. Kevin Trinch, blocked for you, didn't he? Kev, Kevin and Fred both blocked for me. Okay. And, uh so it's uh, wish their families well and with all due respect, and they'll be missed. Fourth down, handoff. Does he get it? It's close. It looks like he did. It was Brent. I beg your pardon. That was J.J. Davis on the carry. He does move the sticks. He needed to get just across the 36-yard line. They're going to spot him at the 37. And I don't want to belabor the point, Jay, but the Norfolk State offensive line, again, north-south running, yep. gave him room to run, and he's able to move the sticks. And, boy, that's a dagger in SFU's comeback chances. Yep. Exactly, Pat. Now the Flash got to think about using some of their timeouts. They have two remaining. Carter's going to keep it. He gets six, maybe seven. Brought down on the play by Parks. Well, we've had our opportunities. Uh, it's not a game that certainly uh, was dominated by Norfolk State. Uh, SFU had opportunities uh, offensively, and we still might. This game is far from over, two and a half to play it's a second and three but they got to get the, the defense has to get this offense off the field Andy Shank too Andy Shank was another player Pat that passed away this past yeah, year that's right he was one of the original football players here when St. Francis started football it's a great running back from Bishop Guilfoyle there's a big time run and first down run for J.J. Davis and and, Jay, the defense, they're showing signs of fatigue right now. Uh, they they have been on the field an awful lot here in the second half, and they've been worn down by the very fact that they've had to spend so much time out there on the field, and that's what we're seeing right here is uh, Norfolk State trying to grind it out and pick up the win on the road. Two minutes to play. Pistol for Carter. they got to take his time. Well, they, I think about using those two timeouts soon. Yeah, and then in Norfolk State's living up to the billing that the coaches told us. They have a big line. Their skilled players are quick and fast, and they're just going to get into a, a a rhythm they like, and they'll just keep doing it, just like they're doing now. Davis Not, football, another first down. Going to be brought down by O'Hara, but sticks move again for the Spartans, and they're closing in. I'm picking up their second win in as many weeks. Now the Flash do use one of their timeouts. Well, they brought him in to Austin Odoms to try to right the ship. It has been no more since 2012. Uh, the team won five games once, four games six, six other times, and hoping to to get this thing pointed in a different direction and hoping to compete with South Carolina State in the MEAC for a conference championship. And there's no reason to believe with this offense that, uh, at least in my judgment, that they 
will probably be in the mix down there in the MEAC right till the end. And uh, next week, go play one of their opponents, Morgan State. It's part of the MEAC. Go to Baltimore, and we will be at Morgan State next week. Yeah, Jay and I will be back in two weeks, and we talk about some of those alums we lost for that LIU game uh, on the 9th uh, before the kickoff. The, the Art and Carmelo Martin Scholarship will be presented. Uh, so I'm looking forward uh, to that event and having some of the Martinuska family back. And I know there's a tailgate plan that day. Dave Shedlock is putting, I hope to have yep. people together, uh, get together at that event. So, Well, another first down for Norfolk State will secure them the victory. That obviously, they're going to keep it on the ground. J.J. Davis, he pounds his way down to the 25-yard line, and Chris is going to use his third and final timeout. You know, you, you like to think we get a turnover, Pat, but uh, they're, they're, they're very stingy with that ball, Norfolk, and they're going to keep running right inside or right outside that tackle. I mean, they're picking up the yards. They're keeping the drive going. They're eating up the clock. Yeah, and, and they really turned things around offensive. They had they had a difficult first half. Uh, you kind of figured Jawan Carter would, would settle into more rhythm in that second half. I mean, a Walter Payton Award list finalist, second in passing at NSU already. Uh, as well as touchdown, pa touchdown passes, completions, total offense. Uh, uh, we knew what he was capable of, and, and he found his rhythm in the second half, and they did it in the trenches, Jay. They controlled that line of scrimmage. That, as much as anything, I think, is the reason why they're going to get out of here with a win. Yeah, they did control the and – and we've talked about that. You know, to control the, the – the trenches you're going to win the game especially here second and five minute and a half to go flash out of timeouts davis football tries to reverse the field actually does a nice job getting back to the line of scrimmage and picking up a couple of yards yeah parks took him down but the clock's going to run. Turn what was going to be probably minus five or six into a gain of a yard. We just seemed to go flat, Pat. We didn't have any any juice in the second half. We just seemed to, I mean, Norfolk came out and just drove right down the field and scored right after halftime. We didn't have an answer for that. We didn't seem to have any enthusiasm. We just seemed to going through the motion is this a product jay and I'm, I'm i'm just wondering you play at eastern michigan you play at delaware you play a very physical wagner defense with probably as good two defensive ends as we have in our league and two of the top dns at the uh you know at the fcs level do you think it's just a there's some fatigue maybe from you know a lot of difficult games for the offense no i don't know pat i, I just think it's i think it's I think we're young. We're young, yeah. and it's about learning. It's learning that you gotta, you got to play every play. You just can't take a play off thinking somebody else is going to cover for you. So to me, it's, it's, a, it's a combination. But these kids have got to want it, and they've got to understand. We're going to play teams that aren't going to lay down. They're going to come back. Just like we came back last week, that's, that's what teams do in this conference. And, they, and we play in, in these FBS goals and these uh, FCS goals. It's well, a good test for us. Well, oh, and clearly they saw something. They, they, they. I don't want to say they abandoned the passing game, uh, and obviously they scored uh, on a pass. Mm -hmm. But it was run, run, run. That was the philosophy. It was north-south running that they wanted to do, and they came out in the second half and executed that strategy well. Yes, and they stuck to that plan, and they stuck to that. You know, they, they were going to live or die by that run, Pat, and they did. Well, it's a third down flash. 
could get it back with a few seconds if they can get off the field here. Carter rolls, Going finds his touchdown. man, touchdown. Anthony Williams. He'll take it in for six, and that'll be all she wrote for St. Francis. So the tight end, Anthony Williams, he finds his way into the end zone. The redshirt senior out of Norfolk, Virginia, homegrown product. Maury High School had a touchdown last week against Elizabeth City, and he'll put the exclamation point on this win for Norfolk State this afternoon. Coming on to attempt the point after is Josh Nardone. And a game in which the Flash had a lot of wind in their sails to start. Mm -hmm. But to Coach Odom's team's credit, they made the necessary adjustments and they're going to get on that bus and head back to Norfolk with a 500 record, 2-2, two and two, heading into their game at Hampton in two weeks. They're off next week, and then they'll be at Hampton. Or, bigger part, no, they're at Hampton on October 2nd. They have their bye week after the Hampton game. And you can't take away from them. They're a very disciplined team. They have great skilled players. They've uh, had a game plan that was going to run, 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 you know. I guess the one thing that surprises me is they were rather one-dimensional with the run game, and yet we still weren't able to, you know, to get off the field defensively. Uh, they, they, they really didn't show. They, again, a few passes sprinkled in, but like you said, it was run, 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 and with that, you know, only turning to that dimension of the game, I thought we might be able to do a better job of containing, but. O-line, yeah. good push, controlled up front, and it's going to translate into a win. Yep. Fans, stay with us in the post game. Jay and I will wrap up this game. We'll talk to head coach Chris Valerio and look ahead to next week's game. At Morgan State, that's all coming up in the post-game show. We'll also run down the other scores around the Northeast Conference and the top 25 on the Flash post-game show. 28-16 with 39.6 seconds remaining. Again, they go with that short kick. That ball is a live ball. Bounces off of one Norfolk State defender. I think they got it, and they do. So, a lot of things to try and correct, especially late. Late touchdown to the tight end. And now failing to take care of that kickoff. The kind of things that drive coaches crazy, Jay. You used to wear that coach's hat. Yep. Really frustrating. Yep. Frustrating for announcers. <laughs> well, you and I have been there many times, Pat. <laughs> On uh, three Phil Golds a couple years ago missed in three overtime games that we could have won. Yeah. Hey, fans, a reminder. LIU and St. Francis over at the Stoke Center for volleyball at 5 p.m. today. So in about an hour and a half, or a bigger part, two and a half. Wow, this game is so fast, Jay. It's only 240. Yeah. I can't believe how quickly this thing moved along. So the volleyball team of five then took. More doubleheader action. Victory formation for Norfolk State as the clock is going to tick to zeros. Women and men's soccer teams. Women at 11, men at 2. two. Women will take on CCSU and the men's soccer team. Winners of four of their last five will take on Merrimack. Two teams converging on the field. As the clock goes to zeros, and it is official. Norfolk State comes into Loretto. The first ever matchup between these two teams, and they'll leave with a 12-point victory, 28-16. to We'll take a break, be back with Coach Valerio. And Jay and I will run down the final numbers and analyze what is a disappointing game for the Flash after winning the
their home opener a week ago against Wagner, looking to make it two in a row at home. It wasn't meant to be as the Spartans come in and post a 12-point victory. Back with the postgame show after this. You're watching Red Flag football on Northeast Conference front row.